We have a MassCAC conference game for you today. The Bridgewater State University Bears versus the Framingham State University Rams. Both teams sent at 4-4 four four overall, but the Bears have the advantage in the MassCAC. Bridgewater's coming off a loss to UMass Dartmouth. It was his first loss on September 7th, 17th, I apologize, against Plymouth State. And that in, in that win streak, they are outscoring points 209 to 34, including two shutouts. And Framingham State is coming off a win over Mass Maritime, who Bridgewater plays next week. Framingham has won the last 10, the 10 of the last 11 matchups between these two squads. I am David Souza, along with Luke Mansfield. Luke, tell me what you th expected from this game today. You know, I think both teams are going to rely heavily on their running game, specifically Adam Couch and Devon Ford. They both have a good amount of yards for each team, respectively, and I think we should look to see a good amount of them today. Absolutely. On this season, Adam Couch with 909 rushing yards and nine touchdowns. Meanwhile, Devon Ford, 851 yards and seven touchdowns, but he's also the second leading receiver with 13 receptions, 121 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, he's been very versatile on offense. Adam Couch, usually a runner, but he's had some good receiving games as well. Last weekend, he led the team in receiving and rushing with 64 rushing yards, 66 receiving yards. So he can do it all too. The last time these two teams met was last season at Framingham State. James Cahoon threw for 234 yards and a touchdown, but Adam Couch had probably one of his worst games of the season, only 17 yards and no touchdowns. And TJ Harrison, the former number 82, we'll get to this year. Um, TJ Harrison had eight receptions, six, 66 yards. But for Framingham, the quarterback last season was Nicholas Goffredo. We have a different starting quarterback this 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 game today. He had 281 yards, two touchdowns. And Devon Ford had 91, 99 yards on the ground and a touchdown to go along with five receptions, 79 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, I'm sure Framingham would love to limit Adam Couch like they did last season. And as you said, we have a new starting quarterback for them this year, Noah Leonard, the junior out of Taunton, Mass. This is his first time matching up with Bridgewater. So this will be an interesting game for him. Leonard on the season, 337 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Very, so pretty solid so far for what he's been able to do. But Cahoon also have an amazing season, almost 2,000 yards passing, 20, yard, 20 touchdowns and four interceptions. So, but I do agree that they're going to have to rely heavily on the run game, but if they do have to pass it, they have two very good receivers for Bridgewater, at least, with Kyle Torres with 373 yards in the air, three touchdowns, and Jack McCarthy, the sophomore from Braintree, his first year of season playing, already had 335 yards and six touchdowns. I think it's interesting to note there's been three quarterbacks to have decent amounts of playing time for Framingham this year. Graduate student Terry Smith leads them with four passing touchdowns, and Nicholas Gafrido, the senior, has one. So they have seven passing touchdowns in total, 15 rushing touchdowns as a team, seven of those coming from Devon Ford. So they definitely prefer the ground game over the air game. Absolutely. I mean, their leading receivers, Manny Lara, has 25 receptions, 326 yards, and five touchdowns. He has more touchdowns than any of their quarterbacks on the season. With Devon Ford, their second receiving their running back and their second leading receiver, has 121 yards to add in the air. So. The air is definitely not the way they attack this game. They definitely attack this game on the ground. They do a very good job with it. Devon Ford is a good is a good player. We'll see both these really great running backs go at it today. Yeah, you look at it in contrast. Bridgewater has two receivers up over 300 yards, and Kyle Torres and Jack McCarthy they just have one over 200 yards, one over 130 yards. So they definitely prefer the ground game. Absolutely, we'll see coin toss. Looks like the Bears are going to take the ball first. They will, as soon as the game starts, it will be Bear football. Coming to you from Bridgewater State University, Swenson Field. I mentioned earlier that the, the Bears have the advantage in the MassCAC. They are four and two, while Framingham State is three and three. So a Framingham State win in enemy territory will switch their positions in the MassCAC, at least their records in the MassCAC. And th this game has big implications. What are you expecting for more in this game as the storyline goes? You know, Bridgewater's done pretty well matched up against Framingham in recent time. I think it's 10 of the last 11 
they've come out on top. But I think Framingham's definitely going to look to switch that up tonight. Why wouldn't they? It's going to be a close game, tough game for both teams. Such a contested matchup with their records in the conference. So it'll be an interesting one here today. The all-time record Bridgewater leads 32-16 to 16, as we took to, to the national anthem. I mentioned earlier in the last match between these two teams, TJ Harrison was number was the former number 82. He's no longer on the team today, but current number 82 for the, for the Bears is Jack McCarthy, and he has had a great season for his first time playing for this Bears squad. And here we have quarterback James Cahoon ready to lead his team to start off this game. It's definitely always nice you can have a sophomore like Jack McCarthy come in and produce the way he did, leading them in receiving yards this year. Clearly the number 82 is a big number for Bridgewater both of these last two seasons. Really, Kyle Torres, a leading yards getter, but only three touchdowns. Jack McCarthy has six. I'm pretty sure he has several games with multiple touchdowns, and he's definitely taken advantage of the opportunities he's been getting. This is the bright future for Jack McCarthy on this team and a bright future for the entire Bears offense with a player like McCarthy being so young and playing as well as he is. Out to receive the kickoff for Bridgewater, we have Kion Gilzine Tucker on the left. On the right, Marcus Carpenter, the freshman. Out to punt, or to kick it off for the Rams. Enrique DeBoni, and the kickoff is up, and football is underway on a Saturday morning at Bridgewater State University. As the Bears offense takes the field here. Quick quick cuddle before beforehand. Rams seem ready to attack. The Bears offense led by number 12, James Cahoon, having an excellent season for himself. So he's been great all year, definitely made some big improvements from last year. He's been a big reason why Bridgewater's been able to pull out so many of these wins. The shotgun hands it off to Adam Couch. And Couch goes on the right side. Excellent run for about nine yards there for Adam Couch. An excellent runner and an excellent run for an excellent runner. Adam Couch on the carry. Comes out on the outside. Gain of six on the play. Call that gain of six. My apologies. It's kind of hard to get the right angle from over on this side. No Sarah in motion. Comes with the pass, and he finds his receiver. These will be short of the first down. But an excellent reception there by number five, Michael Nocera. Caught on the sideline. Not sure, I think Nocera wasn't able to get his feet in there. Bridgewater's offense is moving back, so there, there's a flag. Holding. 67 on the offense. That's 10 yard penalty. Down is two. That's number 67, Matt Bayer, the offensive lineman. Holding is one of the worst penalties in the sport. It can ruin a drive. Yeah, regardless of if Nocera got in or not, uh, that's not going to matter here as they're going back anyway. Looking to pass it. Finds Torres. Torres trying to make a man miss, but unable to. It's met by two defenders and taken down. And here we see the play again, off the play action. Torres is wide open, the screen pass, but to no avail. 
and it goes down. Yeah, not much going there for Kyle Torres. Well covered by the Framingham State defense. That brings us to third and eight. This is a long play. Again, out of the sh they love to come out of the shotgun. So far, every play they've had, they've come out of the shotgun. It's deep ball. Try to find Jack McCarthy. And there's that, that could be pass interference on the Rams. Jack McCarthy, again, showing why he's a lethal threat. Even when he's not casting the ball, he's trying to make a play. Momo Nazir was in coverage on Jack McCarthy for that one. And it looks like he definitely got P.I. called Bridgewater's offense is moving up. So that's a big get for Bridgewater on third and eight, backed up inside their own territory. The P.I., the target for McCarthy. We'll see with the call is shortly from the referee. Pass interference, defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Gonna move up 15 yards from the previous spot. In college, it is just 15 yards compared to the NFL. It's wherever the foul was committed. That's still a decent amount of yardage and almost about where the foul was committed anyway. We got Marcus Carpenter in motion. He gets tripped up and he runs into Adam Couch. Adam Couch stays up and he gets a really solid run. Just taking it up the middle. He uh, bumped into Marcus Carpenter, who is in motion. I think Marcus Carpenter was going to go slide over again, maybe fake the jet sweep. But that's a good play by Adam Couch, able to make something out of nothing there and avoid disaster. Almost was like, hurry up as the Bears are back in a shotgun formation. Back, oh, Cahoon keeps it. He throws it deep, looking for Cal Torres. Nearly mm. picked by number 10, Momo Nazir for the Rams. Yeah, Nazir just got called for that, that PI call on McCarthy, and he almost made up for it right there. He didn't even turn his head, did a great job of defending the deep shot for Kyle Torres. Got his hand on it, slapped that away. That could have been disastrous for the Framingham defense. There we go again, the Bears. Receiver in motion. Play action. Receiver in motion gets the handoff, and it's first, and he's down the sideline, and he's tripped up around the 20-yard line. That was Drew Donovan for Bridgewater, a freshman wide receiver. We've seen two freshman receivers, Donovan and Carpenter, play some decent time for Bridgewater this year, mainly on special teams, but that is a good reception by Drew Donovan, able to get the first down for Bridgewater and push them further into Framingham territory. Tiptoeing down the sideline and making a big play. The Bears are back. See we're in motion. See we gets the handoff. So it'll be go down as a rush for Marcus Carpenter. At that time, he was able to avoid Adam Couch on the handoff, the designed jet sweep for Carpenter. We've seen him get a lot of those throughout the season so far. Well, it's so far, so so good for the Bears as they've been able to convert third downs and create big plays. The hard, hard count for Cahoon there. Looks like he's looking to the sideline for a play. Might be a little bit of confusion. And off to Adam Couch. Couch is swallowed up almost immediately, but gets a few out of it, possibly two yards. We'll see that run again. Yeah, big number 96 for Framingham State. Lens, Lens Pierre was just able to get in the backfield quickly and slow down Adam Couch. Like you said earlier in the broadcast, Framingham did a great job of slowing Couch down last year, and I know he's hoping to change things up this year. They're hoping for more of the same. Only 17 yards against the Rams last season, but he's already, I, I bet he's already made made that up. It's McCarthy is in motion. He's looking to McCarthy, nearly sacked, but gets it to the offensive lineman, but you can't do that. The offensive lineman cannot catch the ball. And that will be a penalty on the Bears, I believe. And James Cahoon just heavily pressured here off both ends. Number 92 was one of the players in there. That's Cole Moretti, the def junior defensive lineman out of Winfield, Massachusetts. He got in the backfield quickly. It's going to be a penalty here. That's an, it's going to be an ineligible receiver. Okay. Illegal touching against the offense. 
The ball was caught. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Also includes loss of down. The down is four. I believe that was going to be number 79, Michael Garofolo, the sophomore from Bradford, Rhode Island, who caught the pass. He needs to do his job of blocking, not much getting out as a receiver. Yeah, I think from his point of view, he probably didn't know if that was a fumble or not. Cahoon was just trying to get that one away. They're going to go for it on fourth down anyway. Fourth and 13. Trying to draw it offside, possibly. Yeah, I think they are. Get a few free yards. Maybe look to Jack McCarthy again. Okay. He's going to snap it. And he's sacked. James Cahoon brought down behind the line. That is a great turnover for the Framingham State Rams. Looks like that was number 33, Najir Montero. And it looks like Mick Cornell got in there as well for Framingham State. So that's a big get for them, stopping Bridgewater deep in their own territory. A great drive by the Bears, slowed down and ended by penalties and met by good defense. Yeah, Framingham's been able to get some good pressure so far in today's game. Really limiting what, what James Cahoon's able to do in the passing game. So the QB keeper, he's got, a, he got a lot of yards out of there and he's still going. Taken down is Noah Leonard, but an amazing run. What, 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 that's for the first play of the offense or a first down. Great play there by Leonard. Noah Leonard has 55 rushes for 266 yards and three touchdowns so far in the season. He lowered the shoulder there. He got that. He's got that dog in him. He lowered the shoulder trying to get through the guy. Yeah, definitely not afraid of contact. He's back alone in the backfield takes the snap to those at this time and he finds his receiver down out for a first down that is number six Nick Gordon Gordon occasionally plays snaps at quarterback has a few passes on the season so we call that a gate of nine down a second second and one that's only his ninth reception on the year he had eight for 82 coming into today good stat line almost a little over 10 yards per catch that's another solid one for him here. He's going to keep it, but he's not going to get as much, but he gets enough for the first down. Looks like he hesitated a little bit on that one. Maybe lost his footing right about there. I think he got tripped up, and Bridgewater was just able to come wrap him up fairly easily. Coming into this game, we expected Devon Ford to play a bigger impact, but so far he has zero... Zero looks, zero carries. He might get his first one on this play. But so far, it's been, a, it's been all Noah Leonard. This is the first time we've seen anyone line up in the backfield with Noah Leonard. And Devon Ford, it's just going to be a fake. But it's a deep shot, and the receiver's open, overthrown for Nick Gordon. Would have been a second catch of the game if he was able to catch. So that would have been a big one. Yeah, Nick Gordon, wide open there. A little too much on that one. That was Brandon Medeiros in coverage for Bridgewater. Lucked out on that. Lang Leonard put a little bit too much under it. But Gordon, having so far a pretty good game, got good separation. Just could not connect with the ball. As off of play action, the first time they had uh, Devon Ford in the backfield. They have, I believe that's a different player now in the backfield. Oh, still, it's still him. Devon Ford, he takes his first carry for roughly no gain, give him maybe a yard. Yeah, he was wrapped up quickly by the BSU front seven. Looks like that was number 55 for Bridgewater. Dan Cataldo coming a, in. Cataldo can make plays in the backfield. He does it regularly. The defensive line for the Bears is very, very strong, very headstrong. They're able to make good plays at the line of scrimmage and behind it. It's, it's third and long for the Rams. They're going to go four out wide. Devon Ford lined up to the right of Leonard. And then they pass. And he gets the reception. It goes down. That's Nick Gordon again. Nick Gordon just getting enough for the first down here. He's been doing a great job of getting separation, and Leonard just able to put that one in between Medeiros and Ben McMahon. 
It was a very tight window there for Noah Leonard to get it in. He just slings it right in there with a lot of force and speed as he gets back out of the shotgun. It's going to be a handoff. Devon Ford. Devon Ford running over the defender, getting getting some yards off of that. Yeah, Devon Ford, that's his biggest run of the day so far, and he just trucks Ben McMahon, but then the momentum from that just trips him up, and Justin Silvio is able to come in and clean up the mess anyway. Ford. Excellent play there as the Rams are moving down the field. Two great offensive drives so far in the game. The Bears was stalled by a defense the turnover, or by penalties in a turnover. It'll be another pass for, for a loss there as he's tackled behind the line by Deliver Ibrahimi. Yeah, that was a great screenplay. That wasn't even Ibrahimi's guy. He was just able to get off the block really quickly, take him down. I think that was McBean on the block. Ibrahimi just able to shove him out of the way. And there's a player down for Framingham State. It was, it was number nine, Jaden Lewis. It was on the block. It could not connect. Ibrahimi makes a great play. There's Coach Vera giving out the water to the team, trying to hype up, hype up his defense. You know, I've noticed something. There's a trend with with coaches. So, if you look at the professional level in the NFL, the four most coaches with the most wins were all defensive guys. Look at Joe Varia here. He was a defensive tackle for for the Bears when he was playing back in, I believe, 1976. And you know, we have Tom Kelly for the Rams, who's also a defensive tackle back in 1972 when he was playing as a, as a freshman. So we have a player getting that's up for the, for the, that's Manny Lara. Yeah. But defensive coaches tend to be very good at winning games. You know, and these are the two defensive coaches today and see what they can do. Yeah, Various spent time as the defensive line coach and defensive coordinator here at Bridgewater. Lara, who was taken down by Ibrahimi, He's their leading receiver, and he's walking off the field right now, so that's not a good look for Framingham. You would expect to probably see the running back, Devon Ford, get some more receptions here as they're back with Ford in the backfield. It's Jaden Lewis in motion. Ford gets the handoff. Oh, excellent nice move. cut by Ford. So cut gets only an extra yard after that cut. But the flag is thrown. That might be unnecessary roughness. On the Bears. That is yeah. not a good. They've had a great drive. and you're, You might have had a finally gotten a stop on this drive, and you, you're you giving them free yards. It's not really what you want. Jaron Alves just came off the field for Bridgewater, and he's on the sideline. He's down. So I don't know what happened on that play, but it does not look good for him, and that's a big player on the Bridgewater defense. To lose, he got off the side. He got off the, to the sidelines, and he's just laying there with a the trainer looking at him right now. Number 40 on the defense. A 15 yard They're going to call that one on number 40, Stephen Sylvia, who I incorrectly referred to as Justin Sylvia a couple plays ago. So my apologies to him. Here we are. Here we are again. Handoff. Excellent cut there. And it's taken out of bounds, and he's hit. Alves going down. Gets landed on top. That's probably what. the what he was feeling. I believe Justin Silva is the player for the Bear, men's bas Bears men's bas soccer team as we have Noah Leonard going down. That's probably where your confusion is with Steven Silvia and Justin Silva, but that's okay. Probably. <laughs> that's all right, everyone makes mistakes. Here we are again with the direct hand, the direct hand off to Noah Leonard, he goes down. Leonard having a great game on the ground, hasn't had to throw it very much, and the Bears have just sort of given them good field position as First time each team has been in the red zone, I believe. Yeah, great job by Brandon Albert, able to wrap him up fairly easily, minimizing the game there. And Leonard's had his fair deal of carries so far. I think he's out-carried Devon Ford by a decent amount as of now. Back in the shotgun. This could be a timeout. That's what it could be. Or a penalty. Yeah, no, oh, that's going to be a timeout. 
That's Framingham State. That's their first timeout of the game. So they'll take a minute here. This is the first time out of the entire game. It was called by Framingham in the red zone. Uh, second and six. Good news for BSU. Jaron Alves is no longer down on the sideline. I lost track of where he was. I don't see that number 13 jersey. But that's definitely a good sign for Bridgewater that he's no longer down. He's back on the field. Oh, that didn't take long at all. Jaron Alves had led the team in interceptions last year. I believe leads them again this season. Having a great season for himself. And has one defensive player of the, defensive player of the week for at one point in this season. Had, he had a multi, multiple interception game. I believe he had three in the second game of the year. Or wow. in the home opener, I believe. It's just off your screen. It's Alves. Ooh, an end around. the home opener. And he's taken down out of bounds. But excellent. That was an end around there for Jaden Lewis. They, fake the, they hand it off to the Ford, and then Ford gets to Lewis, and Lewis makes the most of it. And gets short of the first down to game, and then it's now third down and short. Once again, there's Brendan Albert involved on the tackle for Bridgewater. He's been all over the field so far today on this first drive, and that brings us to third and three. Third and three. This is a big. This is a big, big three yards for this team. Probably going to look to Devon Ford here, if I had to guess. Could be another QB keeper. Leonard keeps it. Ford playing fullback. Steven <laughs> Sylvia got in the backfield, but I think, I think Leonard might have been able to fall forward for the first down. It's very, it's very, it is very close. They're giving, making it a fourth and short. Question is, do you go for it, or do you kick the field goal? I believe they are going to go for it. I think, I think that's a good call. BSU went for it earlier. It's a zero-zero game, so you're not losing much if you don't get this one. And it's not going to be impossible from this distance. They'll they'll come in with two guys in the backfield down Under, at fullback. Understand that this has to be another QB keeper. Oh, it's a handoff, and he gets it. He gets enough for the first down. It's a great play. So three guys lined up in the backfield, and Leonard's just going to go ahead and hand that one off over to Omarion Otto, the freshman running back, bigger running back at six foot, 245, out of Dorchester. They're going to line up in the same formation with Otto. And then I believe, actually, I'm not quite sure who that is. Didn't get a look at the back of his jersey. But they lined up with three guys in the backfield once again. Live on his forward again. An excellent. Another excellent run. These th this team, like we said, they're, they're going to focus on the run. The Bears like to focus on the air gra on the the air game, and the ground game. We have a, have a good running back to do so, but the Bears like to air it out a little bit more, and the Rams like to take it, take it as approach on the ground with a running quarterback and some great running backs on the field. Yeah, oddly enough, that was Dylan DeWolf, the sophomore linebacker out of Wareham, who was lined up next to Otto at fullback on those last two plays. Doesn't have a rush at all this year. And it's deflected the end zone by, I believe that is number 29 for the Bears. That's Brandon Medeiros with a fantastic break up there. They got back in coverage on Nick Gordon. And he, he was the one who got burnt by Gordon a little bit earlier in the drive. So he collects himself there and makes a great play. It almost, it, it almost makes up for it. Um, but if he can do it again, it'll definitely make up for that play. If they can keep them out of the end zone here, the huge play and a huge opportunity for the Bears. Yeah, this might be four down territory for Framingham regardless. Might as well be. I mean, it's it's a 0-0 zero, zero game. Bridgewater's already had possession, so not going to lose much by doing that. And, and it's that, caught for a touchdown. That's Manny Lara, who went down a little bit earlier, the leading receiver for Framingham State. That is his sixth touchdown on the year as a receiver and continues to score these touchdowns. He's more touchdowns than any quarterback on this team has in the air. It's crazy. Yeah. That, it's, that's a crazy stat line to, to, to have. Excellent play there by Manny Lara. Yeah, Framingham has eight touchdowns combined through three quarterbacks, and Lara has six of them. He's definitely been a big player regardless who's under center as the kick is good. He's a trustworthy player and he gets you points. 
And that will, it is now a seven nothing Framingham State lead over the Bridgewater State Bears. With four minutes and seven seconds remaining in the first quarter, the Bears get the ball and hope to answer that touchdown that, they were, that they've that they given up. You know, the first that first drive did not go as planned. They were they, they moved down the field, but they weren't able to score. And it's, I'll be honest, it was costly penalties. Both, both sides of the ball for Bears have been pretty much ruined by costly penalties. If they can keep the game clean, play cleanly, I think they'll be able to have a chance to beat this Fremantle State team for the, for, the, for the first time in several years. Since 2016 was the last time that Bridgewater State Bears have beaten Birmingham State Rams. So we're, they're, they're looking to, to change that and make, the first, make win this game. Deboni, the kickoff specialist coming out out of Rio Claro, Brazil. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, he's a little bit bigger than your average kicker and punter standing in at 6'5", 230. Wow. And you can see that on the camera. He's bigger than a lot of the guys over there. That is a, that is a big man there. I would not want to mess with him, and I'm not trying to. Uh, <laughs> he's the last man to beat on a on a kickoff return. There might be some problems. <laughs> you might you might be sent to the ground as the kick is up. A wobbly one. Carpenter gets it. He's running out running out to his left. Good to, good blocking. He's taken down at the, about the 26 yard line. And the Bears offense back on the field after a disastrous first drive. As we here we see the return again. And that one bounced in front of Carpenter. Good job able to collect it. Steven Newville comes in, makes the tackle on him for Framingham State. Decent gain Carpenter able to capitalize off an iffy kick right there. We see James Cahoon again. On the shotgun with Adam Couch. That backfield can be dangerous when they get going. Uh, Jalen Kopecki out. Uh, to the left side of the offensive line. That's Jack McCarthy at the bottom of your screen as the clock is stopped. The referees are trying to figure something out, possibly respotting the ball. Yeah, there's no flag on the field, so it's probably something to do with the, the spot of the ball, maybe the game clock. We're about to find out. see what the call is I don't know if they're gonna announce it they're moving them back okay there's a possibly a penalty on the kickoff yeah the refs mic seemed to cut out there right, so the, they, they it was a spot of the ball is wrong the 26 and they are back ready and couch takes it gets taken down at the line of scrimmage yeah, Couch hasn't really been able to get going. He had a one or two nice carries earlier, but he just gets wrapped up quick here by number eight, Chase Buno, the junior linebacker from Lynn Mass. He's had a couple of those nice tackles on Couch. Couch only 17 yards last last time these two teams met. There's a reception, his first of the game. A good cut and taken down around the 30-yard line for four yards. So an excellent carry there. For Couch, excellent rep. Yeah, they're just going to dump it off to him and DeWolf, who lined up at fullback a couple times on the offensive drive, takes him down. Couch didn't do much receiving last season. This, se this season has done pretty well for himself, receiving over 100 yards. Definitely improving um, like uh, this, his game as a whole, becoming a more versatile, versatile weapon for this offense. And I think that also comes with just building chemistry with James Cahoon. Last year was his first season starting. This year's his second. He's more used to everything going on and probably has a better connection with a lot of his teammates going into this year. Sarah in motion as Cahoon looks to pass and finds Kyle Torres for a first down. And taken down on the 39-yard line is Torres. Torres is a star for this team, the leading receiver. Even last, even last season was a leading receiver and he's doing it again this season. This is an excellent catch, excellent play. The, just, I think it's exactly what the Bears need at this point in the game. Yeah, they just need to work the ball, get first downs, and keep pushing it up the field. That was a great pass. Towards the bottom of your screen, Jack McCarthy at the top. Catch moving to the other side. Looks like Cahoon's waiting for a play call. Snap. Throws, finds Torres. 
Torres taken down by four progress. will give him to down the 44 yard line. Justin Toon, the sophomore cornerback out of Shrewsbury, got the tackle on that one. Just able to wrap up Torres really before it could get anything more than he already had. Six yards on that. Nice job by Toon, able to limit that to just six. Giving it, they're giving them just under the 50 yard line. And there's a three wide receivers at the top of your screen. Cahoon looks to pass it, looking for Torres, and overthrown. I, think, I don't think Torres was expecting the ball to go his way that early. But if he, 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 could, if he was able to get some separation, that could have been a big play. Yeah, he was kind of locked in there, covered very well. Looks like they were just looking for a jump ball. Momo Nazir did a good job of defending him. Did not draw the P.I. call as Nazir had the P.I. on the first drive against McCarthy. He started lining up against Torres now. Actually back with McCarthy. The pressure got there quickly as Kahuna Knights had to just throw it. McCarthy at the bottom of your screen. Snap. Freezing pressure. Blocked. And I believe that, that could have, they have an argument for pass interference, but they do not call it. Yeah, Cahoon was hit hard on that play. I don't so know if that was P.I. Maybe that was more of a roughing the passer call. I think, I think Adam Couch, it's, 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 it's no, he, he upset. definitely won one. Nick Ashley might have got a hand somewhere, somewhere in there obstructing Couch's ability to catch, and Cahoon was hit, hit hard in the backfield. Was it they're going, for, they're going for a fake field goal or a fake, fake punt? I'm, I'm not sure what this formation is. This is very strange. Looks like they're just adjusting the punt formation. It's maybe, a normal punt. You may be right. They're protecting the punter. Oh, an excellent punt. That is a great punt for the Bears. Eric down at the five. Shane Drake having an excellent season so far. And another great punt for one of the best punters in D3 football. Yeah, Shane Drake's had a great season so far, even getting MASCAC Special Teams Player of the Week a few weeks back. And this one's just going to fall right in front of Jaden Lewis. Just keep rolling back there. Too many Bridgewater players in his way for him to be able to go and get that without risking muffing the punt. Just ahead of the five-yard line for the Bears. The Bears are in great position to get a stop here and possibly even a defensive touchdown. You know, I'm assuming they're going to run the ball a lot, as they tend, they tend to do, and that's a great way to protect the ball in your closer end zone. But we'll see, we'll see what the game plan is here as we have Leonard back in the backfield with Ford. four. Yeah, when you're this backed up inside your own territory, you just want to run the ball, not risk a safety or anything of the sort. Ford gets a big carry of about five or six yards. It's a strong runner is Ford. Yeah, Leonard just hands this one off to Ford. He takes it right, just tries to power through the Bridgewater front seven. They'll call that a gain of five yards. That puts him at second and five. Ford had no hole to run through, but created his own by just running through a defender. That was an excellent play. Just, I mean, Ford is a great runner, make, making great plays. This game is going to go down to the wire. I can already tell we're, we're in for a good one. The first, first quarter is almost done. Snap, hand off to Ford, and Ford, big run. And that is a first down for the Rams. Yeah, that time there was a decent hole for Ford. He takes this one and just parts the Red Seas. Looks like there was a missed tackle by Bridgewater. Steven Sylvia, though, able to recover that and get a tackle Ford not before he scored the first or got the first down. Ford looking like Moses on that play as he gets a big hole and runs through it. And Leonard and Ford back in the backfield. Yeah, two receivers. Bob reset to the left of the quarterback. Another handoff. This one doesn't go for as much, but gets a few yards, gets him to about the 20 yard line. Something's coming off the field now for Bridgewater with a bit of a limp. And then that is going to be the end of the first quarter. The score seven Rams, Bears a zero. With that last play for Ford. He takes it and is taken down. A very minimal game by Steven Silvio there in the pile. We'll be back for the, we'll be back, the Bears will be back on the field. And so will the Rams for the second quarter. But here we have the cheerleaders for the Bears. 
doing to put on a show. Trying to rally the crowd, rally the team. There we see James Cahoon. Probably didn't start the game off the way he wanted to. Goes for it on fourth down, the first drive, not able to get it, and then just a three and out, second drive. Was not a three and out, but it resulted in a punt. We can see the Bears quarterbacks, James Cahoon and SP Pergano, have c communicating with each other. It's good to have that chemistry with the quarterbacks, you know. It's good, it's good to see. And the, you know, the Rams are back on the field, looking to start the second quarter with another score and a 14 nothing lead. Yeah, it's definitely good for a quarterback to have another one to converse to, and maybe just talk things over, something that only they could understand playing the same position. Ball snapped. It's kept by Leonard, and Leonard is taken down behind the line. Dan Cataldo gets in there quickly for Bridgewater. Cataldo can make plays, and he does it again, just basically untouched to the backfield and takes him down. Excellent, excellent play by Cataldo. Excellent play calling by Bridgewater. Excellent pressure. Brian Campagna got back there quickly, too, but Cataldo just able to come in and throw Leonard down. Third and 16, six yard loss on that play. That's the that's the defensive mind of Joe Varia. Yeah, former D-line coach, former D-lineman, just it's a good understanding of what needs to happen on the D-line and gets it done right there. Another run here by Ford as he gets an opening, makes some moves, but it gets taken down again, just short of a few lines to gain. There is again. Yeah, Ford bounces this one right pretty quickly. It looks like he was going to start heading left. Then he's wrapped up by Campagno. Tackled from behind. That's a good job of slowing him down. Only a gain of two. Puts us at fourth and 14. The Bears spread out the defense. They're going to go for it. Well, it looks like they're about to punt it. We have. Oh, yeah, they. <laughs> it's going to be the. Giant punter out, punting it up, bouncing. Right about the 48, 49-yard line for the Bears as the Bears take over on offense with great field position. Able to, you know, we, we saw Shane Drake give a good punt to, to the Rams, and the Rams were able to not get such a great punt. Yeah, that punt definitely didn't go as far as they wanted to. Just bounced down right in midfield. Drew Donovan didn't even have to touch that one. It just downed itself right around the Bears logo. When you're punting it from your own end zone, it's going to be hard to get a good punt. The Bears are back on offense. Cahoon's looking to lead his team to tie it up at least at the end of this drive. He's got Torres in motion. I believe that was Akinche. It was Akinche. It's Kyle Torres. Adam Couch. Down, a good a good gain there for Couch. Yeah, it looks like he got three yards maybe on that gain. Solid running there. If you get, they'll call it four. If you get three yards, three or four yards every time, that's a first down. I mean, positive yardage is positive yardage. Just Absolutely. need to keep getting it, packing it on. It was a pass. It's tricked, and it's no Sarah. No Sarah with it. Huge block. By Kopecky, I believe they're going to throw a flag on that block. Yeah, I think that might have been a blindside block on Kopecky. The flag did come from the other side of the field, but that's not to say it still couldn't be a block, and they're, they're going to move back. Yeah, Kopecky was, <laughs> was insane. It was a trick the cameraman. Cahoon it's faked the handoff to God. pointer, hit no Sarah, oh, and then... Absolutely, that was, a, that was a blindside block by Kopecky. That was brutal. Got to appreciate the effort regardless, but just can't do that. Jalen Kopecky having a good season so far, making a like aggressive play, definitely. Um, and they're looking, here's the call from our referee. In any second now. He's been having some technical difficulties so far. He's waiting to get in position. Needs to center himself. Here it comes. Nope. Oh. Mm -hmm. He's teasing us a little bit. Here he comes. It's going to happen right now. 
Personal foul. Blindside block. 25 on the offense. Repeat the down. There's a repeat of the down because they got a big play, but it's, I, I mean, you got to like the aggression, but that's a little too aggressive. Fans here at Swenson definitely don't like that. You could, couldn't hear on the broadcast. There was definitely some audible booing going on in the crowd. <laughs> you obviously don't want to see your good plays get taken back, but maybe the Bears will do it again and not get a penalty. Like I said, penalties are going to be costly for this team. Scott Couch gets it again. Couch. Well, not, that's William Pointer. I apologize. William Pointer with the carry. Yeah, that's his second play of the game. We saw him on the fake. That ended up going to no Sarah, brought back by the Kopecky block. And Pointer, you know, Couch comes off, and you got a running back who's just as good in Pointer. And we're going to have a swap at offensive lineman. I think someone's helmet came off. William Pointer, the running back from Milford. The senior. Yeah, both of BSU's running backs or top running backs are seniors. They're gonna they're gonna go backwards for Drew Donovan here, and he's just gonna be taken down quickly. This is number 92, Cole Moretti. It is not the outcome you want for a third down play, but it's the outcome they got. Yeah, especially after you hit that big play to know Sarah. That one goes for negative two. Penalties are drive killers. If Shane Drake looking for another excellent punt, he could do it. He definitely could do it. Those are going to give him protection. I think that's Manny Lara out to receive. No, that's not. I'm sorry. That's Jaden Lewis, the freshman wide receiver. So Drake taking his time. That was a nice booted punt, but in the end zone for a touchback. As so we have the Rams taking over. And so that drive definitely didn't end how Bridgewater wanted it to. It looked promising after the big hitter to Nocero. But brought back after that blindside block. I just hope to limit the damage here and not let anything up to Framingham get the ball back. If the Bears can get a big defensive stand here, that could be, that could set up the offense pretty well. It's the offense getting coached. They haven't been doing what they're supposed to do today. Let's keep keep the game clean. If you keep a clean, clean game, you can win the, we can win the game. It's been a bit of a problem on both sides. Excellent catch and throw and another excellent tackle. But great play there, big play, Leonard passing. That was Manny Lara, as we said, the leading receiver for Framingham, has the touchdown on the last drive. Great catch, great pass. 25 yards on that reception for Lara. Lara with six touchdowns on the year, which is more than any of his quarterbacks, which you don't expect. But I, I will say it again. It's, it's a very, it's a very strange stat to have, but it is a good stat to have. If you are Lara, they're just going to hand this one off to Ford, and Ford's going to break away. Sylvia wraps him up, not before he gets the first. Ford has another excellent run here. As Ford just plows through, he breaks the tackles, breaks another, and then eventually gets taken down by Sylvia. Yeah, Ford's up around 900 yards after what's happened so far today. Came in at 854. He's had himself a good season, and I'm sure he's looking to hit 1,000 by the end of it. Ford on the side for this play as Leonard looks to pass it, but he's nearly taken down and sacked, and the pass is incomplete on the, on the sideline to Lara. Yeah, that was a great job by Cody Satomi, just getting in the backfield as quickly as possible, not able to bring him down before he gets the pass off, but it results in an incompletion, so you really can't be too mad about that. I think it's worth noting Adam Couch being looked at on the sidelines by the medical team. We got something with his leg, I believe. But it is Rams, it is Rams offense now. Slapped, thrown, and dropped. It's a brutal drop there. Could have been a great gain, great play for you know, number 13, Isaiah Hanks. That's Hank, Hank's first target so far. Looks like she might just be wrapping his ankle. We have the play again. 
It's thrown. It's a it was a wobbly pass. I can't blame it entirely on Hanks. But, but again, the the Bears defense trying to get a stop. They need a stop. And it was a chance when third down. Yeah, you can't let anything up here. And then they nearly do as Leonard takes off. Oh, a big hit there by Sylvia. He's taken down short of the first down. Brendan Albert was in on that one too. Him and Sylvia just got to that one very quickly. Leonard looked like he might have had something big here as he breaks away through the center of the line. Someone got a hand on him, but he was able to break away from that. And Sylvia just comes in and drops him on the ground. Albert, it's a good stop by Bridgewater to Albert, prevent the get on fourth down. Albert and Sylvia are good running back or good linebackers. I apologize. Do you have on your team? There we have a punter again, Deboney. A very high punt, not a very long punt. And Drew Donovan's not even going to get a chance at this one, but it's going to get a great bounce and bounce past the 10. That was an excellent bounce for Deboney. And without that being good on, good on him to get that bounce. It, it didn't look promising at first, but it bounced their, their own, with their, within their own 10 now for the Bears. Almost at the six yard line, maybe seven. So it, it didn't look like a good punt, but it was a good punt. You know, the cheerleaders going, going ham <laughs> on the, <laughs> the show over there. That's definitely better than getting a punt, that, 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 a touchback. So getting the high punt with a good bounce, not sure that's exactly what they had planned, but it worked out for them nonetheless. Probably going to be a run backed up so far in their own territory. Couch taken down, but not after getting a couple yards there, three or four. It looks like Couch being looked at on the sideline was nothing to be worried about too much. It looks like they just wrapped his ankle and got him back out there. Besides, they bomb put up some turf tape and said, go back out there. And there he is, making plays already. It's Cahoon back out of the shotgun with Couch. Couch carries it again. Couch is still going. Great job of not going down by Couch there as he, I think he just gets the first down. He's short of the first down, I believe. He's about two yards off. He just bounces that one right and he refuses to go down. Yeah, just about two yards off on that one. Gain of five. So third and two. This might be a pass here. Out of the pistol formation. I think you just got to run it again. And they do is Couch. Oh, that was oh, a fake. Cahoon. Cahoon. And he throws it to the feet of his receiver. That is going to be number 86, Ryan Burkhard for the Bears. Uh, just an unfortunate play there. I think I think Couch definitely had a hole. He could have gotten the first down there. But uh, the Bears are going to punt it again. Yeah, when you got a running back like Couch in a short yarded situation like that, I, I think you just got to go and hammer it. Maybe put. Kopecky in that tight end and give it to him or in fullback and just give it to him but nevertheless they go with the pass not going to work out for them not much going for them on offense today Shane Drake looking to send it to the moon and that's a very solid punt right over the head of the right over the head of the return man is still up there's going to be a flag, a flag on flag. that I think Lewis thinks he didn't go down. I think that flag might end up being on the on framing him. I didn't really catch what that was, but I assume it might be an illegal legal block. I mean, the Bears have the Bears think it's going to be on the on the Rams because obviously, you know, your team doesn't your team never commits penalties. No player has ever committed a penalty ever in their time playing a sport. Here's the call. Block in the back there in the return. 48 on the receiving team. All right, so that's going to be one. an illegal block on the back for Stephen Humbo, the tight end freshman out of Reading, Massachusetts. So that punt was good, and now it's even better. The, the Rams are again going to be pinned down inside their own 10 at the 9-yard line. Yeah, solid punt by Drake, and then he's a great job getting it downfield. A couple missed tackles by special teams. That's yeah, just a great play by, by, the, by the return man there. Jaden Lewis. Jaden Lewis. Shot to find his name, couldn't get it. 
as it's going to be Ford getting down after getting a couple yards. Just a couple, though. 22 Ford on the carry. Again, that was a strange handoff there. He sort of doesn't get it right away. Um, like a run pass option sort of play. But definitely they got two yards out of it. Got the shotgun again. It's going to be the Rams. It's Leonard. Takes the handoff. And is dropped by his receiver through the hands. It just right through his hands. He's going to fake the handoff to Ford. He's looking for number 88. That's Daryl Coombs. That's his first target of the game. And that didn't go the way he wanted it to. Third and eight from the 11. This is another opportunity for Bridgewater to get a stop. And they got some good yards to work with. Just think Nick Gordon might be someone they look at on this play. On your screen, you see Brendan Madero's let up a big play, and they made a big play. Let's see what he's going to do this time. Nearly intercepted by Sylvia. Great job batting that one away. It was Sylvia making that big play. As he reads the quarterback's eyes the whole time and nearly intercepts it. That could have been awesome play had Sylvia been able to keep his hands on it. Hey. But he got enough to knock it down. Looks like Leonard was looking for a Lewis on that one. The return man from the last, the last couple plays. Deboni again. A short kick. He's probably, he's probably more used to kicking field goals than he is to punts. Especially with how the Rams have performed this season. You know, scoring a lot of points on field, a lot of points, doing, moving down the field. So punting, probably not really a strong suit. But he's doing pretty, he's, he's been doing okay. And yeah, both, both Drake and, and Deboney have definitely had some days off for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. But Drake's had an awesome season so far. So, so has the entire Rams team. And the Bears playing pretty well. Both teams four and four. One team looking to go five and four. Bears will get this one from the 42, so fantastic field position for them. There's the, it goes to, I thought that was a handoff, but it was not, and it was incomplete to anybody. Almost was caught those five defenders in the area with the ball thrown to. Couch definitely did a good job of selling the handoff on that one. And Cahoon just kind of tosses that one up there. It looks like Torres was in the area, but so were a handful of white jerseys, so that definitely could have gone bad for them. Pressure's been a problem all day for the Bears so far. I and mean, I was watching Couch in that play, so I assumed it was going to him. Right, right. This one's definitely going to... Oh, Cahoon still has it, and it's at the feet of Michael Nocera. Cahoon is just slightly off today, unable to reach his receivers almost. Yeah, no, Sarah had that big play earlier, and this one's going to be quite different as this one drops right in front of him. Not enough on that one, a little bit too low. I think Cahoon just needs to relax, collect himself, and... The Bears are going to look to take a shot here. And they are. Cahoon gets as a space, and it's caught by Kopecky down to the 20-yard line. Great job by Jalen Kopecky on the contested catch there, making up for the for the blindside block he had earlier. He's coming out of a blocking position. Not sure they were entirely sure if he was going to go out and receive in Kopecky. It's a great job beating the linebacker Nick Ashley on that one. Number zero, Nick Ashley. Great tackle, but a better play by Kopecky. I mean, that was just a great place ball by, by Donovan. Cahoon. Make him, make it made a man miss and goes down. Excellent play there. I believe that is Donovan. Yeah, that is Drew Donovan and Marcus Carpenter, two shifty freshman receivers for Bridgewater so far. See a lot of work as a return man and in jet sweeps. Donovan gets a screen, and he shows what he can do there, making a man miss. Well, seeing some of the hits these players take, I do not envy them. I'm glad I'm up in this prex box and not down on that field. As we see here, we have... Receiver in motion. That's Donovan again. Donovan in motion. And it's caught by Donovan. 
Oh, that's a bit of, bit of aggression there by number by number one for Framingham State. That's Cully Curran, the senior defensive back. It looks like he might have grabbed. Not the best angle here. It looks like he grabbed him by the helmet. Well, uh, grabbed by the shoulder pad and just sort of kept going. He kept dragging him on the ground. The Bears are looking to answer here. They're knocking on the door. I'm sure Donovan didn't appreciate that. No flag nonetheless. Yeah, first and goal here. Adam Couch gets a catch. Couch down at the two-yard line. That looks very good. That could look like it could have been a touchdown, but he's taken down. Yeah, Couch with a great job catching this one out of the backfield. It looked like the snap was a little bit low. It was. But Cahoon able to collect it quickly and get it out to Couch. That's a great job by Bridgewater. Able to push deeper within the Framingham territory. William Pointer's in that running back now. Couch has come off. It looks like it might be a direct snap to Kopecky. Kopecky running it. Kopecky, that's in the end zone for a touchdown. Jalen Kopecky with a rushing touchdown, a direct snap. A little bit of trickery here from Coach Vary and the Bears. Jalen Kopecky comes in at quarterback, gets the direct snap, takes that one in the tight end for Bridgewater. They should run that play more often. I bet that, that worked fantastic. Kopecky, a bigger guy, just able to power his way through. Excellent blocks by Bridgewater. Just a great play call right there. That's exactly what you need from your offense. Jalen Kopecky, 6'4", 245. He's got the size to be a powerful runner, and he does it. And it is up through the uprights by Joey Nasso. Joey Nasso has been all but automatic this year for the Bears. Joey Nasso has also run a special teams player no, of the he's week. he's been automatic for the Bears. He's also won a defensive player of the uh, on special teams player of the week for the Mass Cack. Uh, he hit, hit 10 extra points in one game. <laughs> it's very impressive. And here we have the Bears offense, the Bears team celebrating the marching band, playing playing the victory march there. He's a part of it. And we have Shane Drake looking to kick it off again. It was the fight song, not the victory march. I apologize. <laughs> it's, it's all it's all fun. We're all, we're all we're all having fun out here. Bridgewater's definitely got a great special teams duo going on with Shane Drake and Joey Nasso. Nasso has just been automatic for the PATs, and Drake has been phenomenal on punts and kickoffs, getting plenty down with inside the ten yard line. Absolutely. You know, these, these, these Bears play well on offense and defense, but also might, their, specials, their specialties might be their strength. Kicks up, that is into the, act, into the back of the end zone. And having good special teams, that's very underrated. It's not a lot of people can appreciate good special teams, but it's, yeah, that can make or break a game. There's a good field position on punts could help your team out a lot. It's definitely not the most exciting part of a football game, but it's very critical. And as you said, punt position can be huge. And just even NASA just getting those extra points means a lot for Bridgewater. You only need to be up by one point to win. So hey. any, any point was helpful. A missed extra point could be could be make or break. Yeah, you can win a win or lose a game by your kicker, and they've definitely done a lot of winning by Joey NASA. Big run by four. That's a 13-yard run for Ford. Looks like Albert and Sylvia wrap him up, the linebackers for Bridgewater. Ford just gets a nice hole right here. The Red Seas were parted for him, and he traveled and ran down 14 yards. About 13, they're calling it. I think that's enough to put him up over 900 so far for the season. Definitely having himself a great season. He gets the handoff again, another big run. This one for about seven. Brought down once again by Sylvia and Albert. Ford had a slow start, but he's picking up a lot of steam right now. Yeah, a lot of that time, a lot of the time that just happens with running backs. The more they carry it, the, the better they feel, more confident they start getting. And we're definitely seeing him start to get, get a better hold of it and break off some bigger runs here. Out of the pistol formation, we've always seen, this is their second play out of the pistol we've seen from both teams. They both came from the Rams. The handoff. 
It's not Ford this time, but it's taken down. I think that's Bucky McBean, the senior running back out of Norwood. Not sure. Yeah, that is number four, Bucky McBean. That's his first carry of the game. Bucky McBean, also awesome name, by the way, but awesome run as well. You know, they have a lot of have a lot of help in his backfield behind Ford. Yeah, that's always good when you can just take your starter off and put someone else in, and they can just come in and make the best of the situation. McBean has 47 rushes for 207 and two touchdowns so far this year. Is Met? I believe he's. They're they're going to give him short. I think that was that a direct snap. Potentially, but I I think they're going to mark him just short of the first down along the, of the line to gain. The Bears definitely believe so. But they're staying on the field just in case. Brendan Albert pointing in the other direction, and it looks like it looks like it is short. That is going to be very is going to be very close. The chains haven't moved, so it looks like it might be. They're, they're going to come down and spot it and bring over. The chain gang is coming along. You know, I, I, I bet there are easier ways to do this than like this. This is kind of old fashioned. You know, we watch a tennis game. They don't. They know exactly where the ball is. They don't need to. <laughs> well, tennis is out. very different than football, and it looks like that will, as a matter of fact, be a little bit short. <laughs> the Bridgewater crowd very happy about that one. Looks like it might have been six inches or so, maybe maybe a foot, but not too much, not too shy. Definitely able to go for it here for the Rams. You have their offense is still out there, and they're going to stay out. Yeah, you've, you've been successful in short yard situations already. Gone for to four on fourth and one. No point to stop now. And I, they're going heavy up front. Yeah, they're going to run the ball here. And Bridgewater is also matching it heavy up front. Just going to try to get everyone in that backfield. Potential QB sneak here for Leonard. He's going to get pushed forward. That's, his, that's a play goal. And he's short. He's stood up. And he's short of the first down. It is a turtle run down for the Bears. Great play defensively by Bridgewater. Able to stop the QB sneak. That Kopecky touchdown was, might have been the momentum they needed. The momentum shift they needed for this game. And he gets taken down short of the line to get it. It is Bears ball. Turnover on downs. Excellent play. Absolutely a huge play for Bridgewater, especially three minutes left in the half. You, you got to get the stop there because Framingham's receiving to begin the second half. So that would have been, that could have been bad if Framingham goes down and scores on this drive. And then they get the kick in the, in the beginning there's of a, the second half. There's a delay in something. I think they're arguing the, where the ball is going to be placed. They're going to try to measure it. Are they, are they arguing it was a first down? Potentially here. It looked like he went back. He was stood up. But yeah, he, he was stood well, up there. He was way, he was well short of the first down. A couple, you can see the ref shoe right there. There's some, there's some big space in between the ball and the chain. So that is a great play by Bridgewater. Excellent play. Excellent drive for the Bears. And they get the ball back and potentially get a chance to take the lead here with a touchdown. Yeah, three minutes, eight seconds left. Good field position. They definitely have a decent opportunity here to go down and score. Yeah, you want a touchdown with three minutes remaining because you have to give the ball back at the end of half, the next, start the next half anyways, as this is going to be couch taken down for a gain of about two yards. Chase Buno, the linebacker for Framingham. He's flown across the field for them so far. Good job wrapping up Couch, bringing him down. They'll call it that a gain of two. So that puts them at the 45 yard line, second and eight. Chase Barona with the most hair I've ever seen on a football player ever, but making great plays. It's hard to get a good look at his number. <laughs> Cahoon looks to throw it and it's dropped by Nocera. Nearly intercepted. Yeah, it looks by like. D Dylan DeWolf. That was DeWolf. We saw him a couple times on offense out at fullback. But now he's back at linebacker and makes a good play right there. 
You definitely can't let this field position go to waste if you're Bridgewater. Third and eight. Just got to look to hit a deep pass to McCarthy or Torres. You got to take a shot. You want to go, you want to take a shot almost every quarter. They already took their shot, but last time they did, it worked out. So maybe take another shot here. If McCarthy breaks away on that left side, he should have a good opportunity to get a big pass. And Timeout that's, called. I think that's a delay of game. The ref just threw a flag. It's called delay of game. They might have got the timeout right in time. The ref's going to pick up his flag now. Yes, they got the timeout. Timeout. So Bridgewater, Bridgewater just gets the timeout off. That's their first timeout. Both teams down to two. They just got the timeout off before the, the play clock went down. You know, maybe they were looking to get Framingham to jump off sides. Not really sure what the deal was with that, but... Luckily for them, they were able to get that off. That was a close call for the Bears. Even the, even the back judge threw his flag. So I don't even know if he knew there was a timeout. Typically don't, it's back judge, but again, excellent. There's an excellent opportunity for the Bears to, to win this game. You have Jack McCartney on the, at the bottom of your screen, Kyle Torres at the top, Adam Couch to the backfield with Cahoon. You know, they got the powerhouse out here. Nocera, Kopecki, with his touchdown earlier. McCarthy matchup with Nazir. He's gone around the field covering both him and Torres. Did have the PI earlier in the game. Pressure and dropped by Adam Couch. That is not the play they they wanted. That's not the outcome they wanted for that play. Yeah, they, they just got in the backfield quickly. It, as we said, pressure's been a problem for Bridgewater all game. And the, the snap was a little bit low as well, but you look and Nick Ashley's just there immediately and joined alongside by Mick Cornell. Both of them in the backfield almost immediately after the snap, and that's just not something you want to see if you're James Cahoon. Shade Drake looking to pin them again. Good protection on the punt. That's a good one. This is going to be a back... That's ne oh, oh, nearly a good special teams play, but it is dropped, and it's going out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. But nearly a good special teams play. That, court, that, that special teams coordinator will be very happy. I don't know how happy he'll be. One of his gunners just dropped it, but... I mean, he would have been happy if it was a good play, but it... Drake definitely had a good punt. Could they, a great play could have been made, but bit of a misunderstanding there and couldn't find the ball in the air and we are back here 20 yard line for the Rams so 217 left for the Rams to push this down into Bridgewater territory they will be receiving the second and half it's kickoff tipped and almost caught but it was tipped at the line let's see who tips it here Dan Cataldo had the sack earlier. He's had some big plays on the defensive side, and he gets a hand on that one, able to swat it away. This, this, these linebackers and this defense, basically the line for the Bears, very brutal, very lethal, and they can make plays whenever they want. Yeah, Jared Owls at the top of your screen. Medeiros down bottom left. Ibrahimi. Over in the slot, trying to get deep. There's a run. Brandon Medeiros takes him down. I'm sorry, Brandon Albert takes him down. Brandon Medeiros is number 29. Albert's 45. Albert's a very good linebacker for this team. And he comes in and just throws forward on the ground. Yeah, he and Steven Silvia have done a great job at the second level so far for Bridgewater. Not letting much get past them as far as running goes. There's a timeout. That's going to be Bridgewater. Run for the Bears. This Ryan Varia defense. I mean, he's a de was a defensive guy himself as a player. Uh, defense coordinator for a, lot, for a long time for this Bears team. Now he's the head coach, full-time head coach, sorry, in this season. And... They, this, this defense plays very well. They they fight hard. They play hard, and then they you know they, they may not let up. They let them play, but they'll make a big play afterwards. You know, they, so far this score, this game has been low scoring, which was which I predict was going to be very high scoring and very low scoring. You know, because both these teams are very good teams, and they can score on you at will. Yeah, you just really got to tip that to the defense. They've been really good. 
Albert gets the big TFL there, third and 12. This is a huge spot for Bridgewater. It's very important for them to not let anything up here. The third and long. Leonard looks to pass, throwing it. It's gonna be caught by nobody. It's Jaden Lewis got a hand on that. Jaron Alves was right there. Jaron Alves. Al alongside Zachary Souza. Jaron Alves has eye on it. We're trying to get, look, probably looking for another interception in the season, but so I was right there. And unfortunately, unable to make contact. But that would have been an awesome play for the for the Rams yeah. or the Bears. I think it was up to anyone. And it was anyone's ball at that point. A little bit of an awkward position for Jaden Lewis to kind of come around and get that ball. But Jaron Alves, great job on defense. We have Deboney again. He's had some short punts so far, and again, not the best spot for him to be punting from. This is a great punt. Oh, oh, the, the bounce, bounce is not. That bounce is not, not what you're looking for. Oh, there's some aggression going on with the team. We don't want to see that. Um, but that definitely. Looks like that was Dylan DeWolf and Adam Ferrero. The Bears are going to take over in their field position again of the 39-yard line. Couldn't score the last drive. Looking to score this drive with less than two minutes remaining in this first half of play. So far, a very good game. I like watching good defensive games and seeing it today for both sides. So we have Cahoon and Couch. Sure, those two have group. a different opinion on how this game's been played so far. They'd like to run up the score a little bit here. So Cahoon still has it. Finds his receiver. And it's going to be a touchdown for Kyle Torres. Kyle Torres breaks away for a huge touchdown there with little time left in the second the second quarter, end of the first half. That is exactly what the Bears needed at such a crucial moment. Just wide open is Torres, and there's no one's catching up to him. He is gone. Excellent play by Torres. Couch has done a great job of selling the fake so far, and he did that again there. Great job by Cahoon getting it over to Torres quickly. A quick strike touchdown. A minute 38 left on the clock. Oh, the kick is blocked and recovered by the Rams, and they're going to take it back. There's going to be two points going the other way. This has been an awesome drive to watch, and that's two points for the Rams. Nazir picks that one up and takes it to the crib. That is, wow. Don't see much of that. Wow. Joey Nasso typically very good at blood, but for some reason he gets blocked. And he just, <laughs> just. Dylan DeWolf just swats that one down very quickly. The only person to reach to tackle him was quarterback SP Pergano. At least tripped up at the 40 yard line. There's no one around him for like 20 yards. This is in the end zone. Excellent. I think that was less of Nassau, more of a missed blocking assignment there as Dylan DeWolf just walked in there free, untouched. The Bears take the lead, but the Rams weren't going down without a fight, that's for sure. Just that was that was a great that was what that was two plays in a row of scoring. It just there's been <laughs> the marching band doing some push-ups. <laughs> But you see a touchdown for the Bears in the, on their first play of that drive. And then immediately after that touchdown on the extra point, it's taken back for two. A great special teams play there for Framingham. It's now a four-point game with a minute and a half remaining. The Rams take over on offense. It's pretty less than ideal for Bridgewater. If they make that kick, they go, they go here with a one-score lead. Still have a one-score lead, but a, a touchdown will sway the field a little bit. It's, it's down to a touchback in the end zone. And if you're the Bears, you want to get a stop here. You want to get a stop because the Rams got the the, you, you, the Bears got the ball to start the game. The Rams got the ball to start the second half. So you need to get the stop here if you're the Bears. There's a chance for a 14-point swing. To start the second the second half of this game and you for the Bears you can't afford that you just scored a almost a miraculous touchdown with a great play by Torres 
and now you you know that that's going to happen again. So you want to make sure that this, this Rams team does not score. It's going to be handoff to Ford, and Ford's fighting goes down. Get a couple on that one, not too much. Let's see this play again. This four gets met. Meets his own lineman and then gets taken down by the Bears. There's a lot of bodies in that backfield for both teams. They'll call that one second and seven, so a gain of three there for Devon Ford. Clock is ticking. There's about a minute, 10 seconds remaining on this clock. They're, like, they're gonna get the snap off with less than a minute remaining. Framingham still got two timeouts, so I think they definitely look to use one here. Potentially, if they can, if they can, the Bears have a few timeouts. There's not quite time for commercial break yet. <laughs> As Bears going to take it down, they take down. That is Ford again. Uh, there's going to be a timeout. Ford on the for looks like they're calling no gain on that one. Still third and seven, or now third and seven, was second and seven. The good job by Bridgewater, able to wrap up Ford. So there's a timeout by Bridgewater, so that's their last timeout of the first half. Framingham still with two. They'll actually call that a gain of two by Ford, so now it's third and five. There's Ford again. I mean, if, unless the unless the Rams run the ball here, the Bears are trying to get the ball back. The, the, the big, unless there's a barring a big play by the Rams at a first down, but the Bears are expecting the Rams to throw this ball, get it incomplete, and get the ball back with about 30 seconds remaining to score in this first half. Yeah, if the Rams don't want to risk anything, they could just knee it out, but I don't think that's what they're going to go for here. They got they have a lot of bunches up, bunched up in the front. In the front, we're going to run it. I the think they're looking to run it here. Try to get it in the hands of your best players. See if he can do anything, make something happen. And they still got two timeouts anyway. Forty-four seconds remaining in the second quarter. The handoff to Ford. He's and met in the backfield quickly. That could potentially be the final play of the first half. As I believe Campagna got there quickly for the Bears. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like Framingham's just going to let the clock run out on this one. Doesn't mean that Bridgewater's not making their substitutions because they seem to think they were going to have to kick, make a play here. But I, they don't have to. The clock is done, and that will be the first half. So 13 to 9, Bridgewater leads the. the Two points comes from, in case you're just joining us, a blocked PAT. So that's how the first half ends. And Framingham State will look to receive the beginning of the second half. We'll see you in about 20 minutes after a brief commercial break. Hopefully we get snow day today. The opportunities for me as an undergraduate here at BSU are essentially limitless. I've gotten an internship, I've been going to these great classes. I've definitely been given the ability to pursue something that's so passionate and dear to me. And we are back for the second half of Bridgewater State University Bears versus Framingham State University Rams. The Bears lead 13 to nine. You can see the stats of the game. The Bears have thrown a lot more and a lot better than the Rams, but the Rams have run a lot better than the Bears. You know, it's, it's, it's surprising to see a player like Adam Couch only have 31 yards, or th it, it only th 37 yards, part of me. Um, and the only touchdown scored by the Bears has been by Jalen Kopecky on the ground. So that's... That's one. But also the other the reception that they're receiving a touchdown from Kyle Torres, but their only rushing touchdown was scored by the tight end, which yep. is highly unexpected. Penalties have definitely been a problem for Bridgewater, as you saw in that graphic. They have four for 45 today, which is not ideal, and they've been in some key positions for them. Of course, the score, as you said, nine to 13. Uh, the nine comes from a touchdown and a blocked PAT that Framingham ran back. So that's why the score is a little bit weird. The weird score is what we're here for. We love score gummies here. I mean, could be a, could be 
the Bears defense looking is looking to get another stop and keep this lead. But you know, the Rams, it's only a four point game. You get a touchdown, you take a three point lead. The Bears probably aren't gonna be able to kick a field goal. They're not gonna really attempt to kick a field goal. And they're just gonna try to get a touchdown. If you can stop, if you can, if the, Bears, the Rams get a score here, and they can take a three point lead. If the Bears get a stop here, they will keep a four point lead and get the ball back. And who knows what will happen then. But it's definitely looking good for either side to possibly take the take the winning and this and this game here. Yeah, this is a big game inside the conference. So this should be highly contested for the rest of it. As you said, Framingham's done a lot more on the ground than Bridgewater. Devon Ford, 16 rushes, 68 yards, a net of 65. His longest rush, 14 yards so far today. BSU has outpassed them, though. Kyle Torres, four for 61 and a touchdown with a long of 39. That came on his touchdown. Their leading rece the receiver of the Rams has 26 yards and a touchdown and only three catches. After this, uh, the first half of play so far, Devon Ford has now eclipsed 900 yards on the season, and Kyle Torres has surpassed Jack McCarthy, who's gone without a reception so far today, which is very strange for him. That's an interesting kickoff. It was an onside kick for the Bears. It's an interesting, it's an interesting play call to start the third quarter, I will be honest. But there's a flag. Possibly the ball didn't go too good to go far enough. It was on the hit. It looked like a Framingham player got a hold of it first. I, Framingham State, I think, penalty is going to go. No, it's going to go against Bridgewater. I think Framingham State's getting away clean with that. They'll get decent yard, decent position. Where we are awaiting the call from the referee. Interesting move by Bridgewater to go for an onside kick to start off the second half. I mean, you're leading by four, but even then, it's a, it's a strange move. If you were down by four, I still don't know if I'd understand it. And that that is going to go against Bridgewater as they've begun to back up. That is um, number two. That is, that is going to be a penalty. On number two for the Bears, that is Deliver Ibrahimi, who is the safe, uh, who plays safety, the junior out of KCI on the play, the receiver gave a big catch signal and then got hit. Oh, so 15 like yard penalty, catch signal first down. And Ibrahimi hit him regardless, so that is a rough penalty. I mean, it feels strange to be able to, be able to even call a, you know, a fair catch on Oh, I don't think he actually did. I don't did. even know. I don't, I don't think, think he signaled count. for an onside kick. But the call I think he call. just put his hand in the air to go get the ball. Or uh, not an onside kick, a fair catch. As, okay, and the run by Ford is taken down. But I think he was just getting a position. His arms were moving around. I, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a break for the Rams, definitely. I definitely still think it's an interesting call to go for an onside kick right here, especially if you don't recover it. That's a... It's a big risk, and, and you're putting Framingham in great position. And the penalty as well. But your defense is playing well all day. I don't see the point in calling that calling that there. Yeah, but there's no urgent need to score. I mean, we still got two full quarters to play. It's a handoff there. It's taken down short of the first by a few yards. Big bet about third and second. Third and two, I should say. Devon Ford, we've seen a lot of him so far. He's taking a carry for a couple of yards, Wrap. trying to work it further into BSU territory. Wrapped up fairly quickly, though. My Dan Cataldo, who's played, made a lot of plays today, and is continuing to make plays. Yeah, Dan Cataldo's been huge. He had that swat. He has a sack. He's been all over the field today. With that, I think that puts him at seven tackles on the game, including the sack and a TFL. And it's out of bounds there after the catch. Speaking of tackles, that was a nice one, able to wrap up Nick Gordon. Nick Gordon, great catch. The Rams are looking to, you know, punish the Bears for their aggressiveness. And, yeah, I mean, they're, they're looking to score here, take the lead. 
It's a nine yard reception for Gordon, so that gives them three yards more than they needed for the first down. And this puts them in a really good position. New set of downs, very close. Just behind the 20. And it's tipped. Cataldo again. Okay, making plays all day. It's Dan Cataldo, with a, this time with a tipped pass. That's his second one of the game. He's got a sack earlier. He's got a, he's got a tackle for a loss. He's made, made a big tackle earlier on this drive, and now he's getting a tipped pass. Wow, he's been fantastic today so far. Cataldo, he is a senior out of Wakefield, Mass. Wakefield, Mass, I should say, if I pronounce it correctly. It's going to be out of the shotgun again for the Rams. It's going to be a QB keeper. Leonard down. A little bit short. Short of the first, got the first down yardage, short of the touchdown. He's a little shaken up. Steven Sylvia laid a pretty big hit on him down in front of the goal line. I think he's down on the ground right now. Leonard, that is, not Sylvia. But yeah, Leonard just keeps this one up the gut, takes it himself. Great blocking by the rest of his team. And Sylvia, I think, hit him just square in the chest. Might have knocked the wind out of him. If you were the Rams, you would not want to see that from your quarterback, but. And he's walking off the field. It's going to be next man up for the Rams, which is potentially Terry Smith. Terry Smith, the graduate out of Seekonk, Mass. I believe that's who's coming in. Yes, Terry Smith out of Seekonk, Mass. Looking for great field position here, set up by his, by his fellow teammate and quarterback, Leonard. As he takes the snap, hands it off to Ford, and Ford like a Ford truck just powers into the end zone. He broke, he broke the plane before the ball came out and it's a touchdown. I was about to say, Terry Smith actually leads the team in passing touchdowns with four. Three interceptions to go along with that. Devin Ford with a great run here, powers his way to the end zone, puts him up over 70 yards for the game. And the onside kick for Bridgewater did not work out well. They pun the, the Rams were able to punish the Bears for their aggression and get the points. Get a nice seven and take a three-point lead heading into the remainder of this game. I don't know what they're heading into. <laughs> a field goal would, you know, if this puts them in a position for where a field goal would tie it, but... Historically, the Bears have not been great at field goals the past few years. Last year, they only attempted two. So, you want to score. You definitely do want to attempt to score. The Bears have done better this season on field goals. I don't remember the stats, but you want to score touchdowns. Football is made, it, it, it's, it's made on touchdowns. You score a touchdown, you let up touchdowns, whatever. You want to get touchdowns. You want to get points. So, the Bears are definitely looking for to Looking forward to getting a score here. Hopefully a touchdown. They're hoping for a touchdown. And the Rams are looking to prevent that with the best they can. And we have Deboney. The like absolute behemoth. Maybe one of the tallest players in the entire field. Kicking it off. Might be one of the tallest players on the entire roster. 6'5", 230. I mean, he, he's built like a, like a defensive end or a tight end. That is a huge, huge kick. That's almost going to clear the entire end zone. Gilzine Tucker and Carpenter not able to get a hand on it. So Bridgewater is going to come out here with decent field position. Deboni is the second tallest player on the team. The tallest is 6'6 six, six junior, or Tevin Cadet out of Medford, Mass. A big right tackle for Framingham State. Bridgewater starting from 25 after the touchback. Torres in motion. And, uh, oh, it's, uh, that was a handoff, it was a catch, and it's gonna be Torres with it, going down for about six yards. Kyle Torres, newly crowned leading receiver for the Bears after his performance in the first half. Gets another reception there. Still yet to see anything from Jack McCarthy other than a couple of targets, one which he was interfered with. Let's be a handoff to Couch again, and Couch 
potentially gets a first down. Might be a little short. It all depends on where they mark it, but he's very close to the line to gain. And yeah, there's a crowd of bodies can barely just now seeing Couch. I think it looks like they're giving him the first down, and they will. So Bridgewater gets the first down after the Adam Couch rush, first and 10 from the 35. Just got what they needed off of that. There's another pass. It's down the sideline looking for Torres, and it's caught by Torres on the sideline. A huge reception on the 50-50 ball for Kyle Torres. Great job, great placement on the pass by James Cahoon. Torres just able to go up and get it over the cornerback Justin Toon for Framingham State. Great vision by Torres. Doesn't take his eyes off the ball once it's going his way. He gets, he gets the foot down, that's all he needs. Now Kyle Torres, have yourself a game. He's gonna be looking for the 100 yard mark soon. He does that occasionally. It's very rare when these teams go 100, but he does it quite often. His couch has the handoff and he keeps going. And he's taken down. These are run there for a few yards. Yeah, Couch just takes this one up. Makes a nice cut right there to avoid the tackle from Daniel Oyede. Sorry if I absolutely botched his name. Hey, you, you took a chance, so that's all right. Hesitated for a second. <laughs> so another pass, avoiding pressure. Throwing it, he's got Adam oh. Couch. Could have had a touchdown there, but he drops it. Right in the hands of Adam Couch. Not As we said earlier, not really known for his receiving prowess, more of a pure runner. But he's had his best collegiate receiving season so far this year. Not able to reel that one in though. I'm sure he'd like to get that one back. He's not too happy, so happy with himself. As we, as we mentioned, as I want to mention earlier, Adam Couch, coming into this half has more than doubled his yards from last game against the Framingham State Rams. He went 17 that game as you look at the takeoff, takes Cahoon, himself. very rare sight for the Bears offense. It's Cahoon taking off, but Cahoon gets enough for the first down and more. Now yeah, worth noting, William Pointer's now in the game at running back. They just want him out wide for that one. And it looks like he'll stay in for this play. I don't think that has much to do with Couch dropping the pass. I just think he needs a breather after all the action he's seen so far. Slowly. Cahoon coming into this game with only roughly 20 yards on the ground and gets about half of that in one play. And it's caught by Kopecky and out of bounds. Kopecky lowering the shoulder. Kopecky, not someone we see a lot of receptions out of. You know, maybe a couple here or there, but he's had two big receptions so far today. And he has the rushing touchdown as well off the on the goal line play. Definitely not something you see out of your tight end. Direct snap, did a great job of powering his way through it. Occasionally you'll see him at fullback too, so that makes sense as to why they do that. The run is for pointer. And he's down about five yards from the line. A little scrimmage. extracurricular there and someone gets pushed over. That's a flag. Flag is thrown. I think that's going to be on pointer. I thought it was thrown miles into the air. I was waiting for it to come down and it just wouldn't. Yeah, the ref the ref had some some strength behind that one. <laughs> Maybe play some baseball with it. I think BSU is going to be moving back here. They look, they look like they're about to. And the referee seems to be placing it. Dead ball, first to a foul, late hit. Yeah, that's a dead ball foul, late hit on William Pointer. It looks like he shoved someone over after he had already been taken down. A couple of players were getting into it there. Just not the kind of penalty you want to see. That's 15 yards, and you give up some really excellent field position. I mean, you never want to see a penalty unless it's going in your favor, but, you know, uh, uh, especially not one that could have been very easily prevented. I mean, he's down, and he just, just pushes him, like, that, that's you kind of see it right there. There's a couple players in the way, but he just absolutely tosses someone to the ground. I think that's number 21, Michael Brooks, the graduate student safety. Now it's second and 10. Pointer still in the backfield. He takes his shot. He's going We're second and 21. Stepping out of the pocket and running again is Cahoon. He slides. The graphic got me on that one. 
William Pointer you know, comes outside, but I mean, this is a great run by Kahoon. He really, he rarely runs, but he's already the two two runs in this drive, pretty solid. William Pointer, you know, that aggression almost cost him. A, it could have cost him this drive eventually. Yeah, um, I understand being a little bit upset. It looked like there were some players still hanging on to him after the play was blown dead, but you just can't do that. You know, that was that one from second and six. William Pointer out of most second words, eight. Yours truly, and the ball goes to him. And he's taken down straight over where they started. This, this, these sets of downs. And it looks like they might be going for a field goal. As you said, BSU not a big field goal team, but SP Pergano in the special teams unit is coming on. Shane Drake going to take this one. We've seen him handle punting and kickoffs. Joey Nasso usually handles the PATs. Drake, they're looking to tie this up. They get the ball back to the Rams, but here comes Drake with it. Not to be confused with the rapper Drake, who released the album earlier this week. In fact, it was yesterday. This kick is up, and it is, is it good? It no is good. No good. They were that no good. From our angle, it's good, but we're kind of far away. So kind of difficult to see from this angle, but it's no good. That is unfortunate for the Bears, William Pointer definitely kicking himself right now because he almost cost the team some crucial points there. He did cost, he the, did team cost the team some crucial points. I mean, they went from they went from the, you know, inside the 10, 15 yards in the wrong direction because of that. Good news for them, though, not great field position for Framingham. So this might be an opportune time to try to get a stop especially the way Dan Cataldo, Steven Silvia have been playing. We look at, you're, and if you're the Bears defense, you gotta, you gotta get a stop here, get the lead back. And the Rams, you just gotta keep doing what you've been doing, running the ball with Ford, and your quarterback who is back in the game, that is going to be. Leonard's back. That is number, that is number 12, Noah Leonard. He's back in the game. Of course, they scored a touchdown with their backup. Uh, Terry Smith with the handoff to Devin Ford. Someone else is down. It looks like an offensive lineman. That is number 53 from what I see. There's Tevin Cadet. That is the tallest player in the field. And it, you can you can see him. It's Junior from Medford, Mass. Yeah, Cadet's been a good player so far this year for Framingham, and that's going to be a tough loss. Good good seeing him walk off under his own power, get a little bit of a limp, but reassuring nonetheless you know, you to know, see you, him walk off like that. You never want to see – you ever want to lose a tackle, especially your left tackle that's protecting the quarterback's blind side. But, you know, we have – you can argue short of quarterback that offensive tackle, defensive end are the two most important positions on a football team, and that's a big loss for Framingham State. But no fear, Bryant Bowman coming in. And taking his place, snap, gets it, keeps running as Leonard, taken down by, I believe that is Brennan Albert on the tackle. Worth noting, Bowman's gonna be matching up against Cataldo, who's had himself a game so far today. So getting an offensive tackle in there cold is going to be tough to go up against someone who's been on fire. Albert almost knocked the ball out there, but able to hold on to it is Leonard. Yeah, Leonard's done a great job of ball security all year. He, he rushes fairly frequently as far as quarterbacks are concerned. So not a surprise there. He was able to hold on to it. Near, that one was almost interceptable by Jared Alves, but man, that's going to be fourth down, and they're going to punt it. Another great defensive stand by the Bears. That is absolutely huge for Bridgewater, able to put up a fourth down stand here after missing out on the field goal. Just a drop right there by Daryl Coombs, the sophomore wide receiver. Probably a second target of the game, and that one goes for nothing, and it's going to be Bears ball very shortly, barring a disastrous punt here by the Boney. He's had some short ones today. Donovan out to receive it. It's a high snap. Oh, that's This excellent. is not going to be a short one. This is an excellent punt. It's still going. That one's just going to bounce out a little before the 10. 
down to about the 13 yard line. That is an excellent punt. He was almost in his own end zone and he gets across the field. So Boney with an excellent play as the Bears take over. Coach Varia and his squad they're talking to his defense on the bench right now as the offense takes over. This is the fans going crazy. Well, there's a lot of fans in attendance today. I'm surprised. Maybe it's because there, there hasn't been many home games for the Bears so far. And then in at least a month. Yeah, it's know. been a while since BSU football has been at Swenson, so it's definitely exciting for a lot of the fans to be able to come back and see a game. Right back motion is couch. It looks for a receiver. That's going to be Nocera. Nocera catches it. He gets taken down after right seasons after he catches it. Cully Kern does a great job of wrapping Nocera up after this quick pass, not letting him get any more than he already had. It's Nocera's first reception. First reception that counted. Of course, he had that big reception that was called back after the blindside block. Second and six. It's thrown. Caught by Donovan, and Donovan with room out of bounds after getting the first and more. There's a flag on the play. Not sure what that is. Probably potentially I guess it's holding. But it's when in doubt, it's holding. <laughs> we wait to see what the call is very shortly. Looks like the BSU offense is moving backwards for the time being. That. Drew Donovan, first down is good, but yeah, give it a couple seconds. Play. Holding, number five on the offense. That's going to be Michael Nocera, the, the wide receiver, senior out of Down Cumberland, Rhode Island. He just had the reception. Now he gets a holding, and that's going to push him back. Michael Nocera lost a big play. It was in the penalty. Right the there. We, from the 11 -yard line. lost a big play to a penalty and loses another. They cost the team a big play of the, the penalty of his own. And Adam, Adam Couch. Couch with some great running there. Great run. I was trying to talk, but Adam Couch was just trying to run. I, I'm sorry. That was a good run. He is a great he makes job. A, Couch running behind his blocks right here. Makes a lot of cuts when he needs to. Oh, he gets helped up by by his by the opponent. You know, you like to see that. You know, that's Chase Buona with the longest hair I have ever ever seen in a football player before. He has he's had himself a pretty good game too. Looks he like and a, Couch have matched up a lot. It looks like a fox's tail almost is stuck to his helmet. Oh, and he's getting pressure and it's caught by Nocera. The pressure by Buono there. We see the play again. It's a quick pass. Sarah must, no, Sarah gets the gets the gets the space the separation. It goes out, and it is going to be third and oh, first will be for calling out a first down. All right, yeah, just a great quick strike pass from Cahoon over to no, Sarah, able to secure the first down. And the BSU offense hasn't done a whole lot today, but that's definitely reassuring. Of course, they're in the same area they would have been without the holding penalty, but nonetheless positive to see them moving in the right direction. Sunday Matthew Gaudet has been ready for this play forever and whistles blow. It's going to be a timeout for, I believe, the uh, Bears. That's going to be a Bears timeout. That's their first so far, first for half. either team so far on this half. I'm sure Varia just wants to collect his offense, make sure they don't have any big penalties. That's been a problem for them. I believe they're going on six or seven so far, both sides of the ball. And many of them have been very costly. The holding that brought back that big play by Donovan. Of course, the penalty of William Pointer, which brought them back and prevented them from getting a touchdown and even a field goal. And, and then the, the illegal blindside block by Kopecky, too. They've just been killers so far. Lots of, lots of costly penalties for the Bears, but they're still looking to, they're still in this game, only down three. This has been a very entertaining game so far. It's back out of the shotgun. Receiver in motion. That's Carpenter. 
And it's Couch. Couch with it, making cuts. Great run there, and he's down at the 29-yard line. Very happy about that run. Yeah, so Adam Couch outrushed so far here by Ford and definitely performing better than he did last year against Framingham. I'm sure he'd like to get those numbers up a little bit, but he does a great job making a cut right there, avoiding the tackles, getting six on the carry, setting them up at the 29 with second and four. Adam Couch has definitely been one of the most important players for this offense so far, but he's taken out for this play to replace of William Pointer. Kopecki in motion. Cahoon's going to step up, and he's, he should, he probably should have run that ball, but he tries to look for his receiver, I believe that is. Akinche. It was Daniel Akinche. That's, that's his first target of the game so far, or his second target of the game. Akinche had a big game a couple weeks back at homecoming. Two touchdowns. Absolutely, a, a monster performance there for the Bears, and especially for Akinche. But we're going to... Continue his Akinche's back going out wide. You can see him there at the top of your screen. Akinche field stretching wide receiver. Got some good speed to him. They're just going to send him out wide. Hope he's able to bust some Sarah coverage. In motion. This time he keeps it, but it goes down after possibly a loss. It's going to go down as possibly a sack. There's maybe a yard, half a yard here. And Framingham's done a great job getting pressure on Bridgewater all day, and Cahoon, not much going on downfield. He'll take it himself, and it's not going to work out for him. No gain on that one. So he'll he'll do a good job of getting it back to the line of scrimmage, <laughs> as it looks like there's some counting going on here. <laughs> How many players they have on the field? Yeah, might have thought there was 12 guys. Sometimes it looks like it, especially on punt returns. There's a lot of people bunched up. But uh, Louis Sullum just making sure everything was all right. This one's just going to bounce right in front of him. Oh, that was. He gets flattened. Great trickeration there. I thought he would just let the ball sort of go and he'd go down, but he tries to run for it. But that was Matthew Mamoni coming in to clean up the tackle. He grabs it and he's like, I'm going to take it off. And they're like, no. Nah. And he comes in and takes him down. You can tell they all said, nah, as soon as he started trying to run that. <laughs> Interesting to know, we haven't seen him on the return unit at all today. It was Jaden Lewis, the receiver, who's taken most of the work on punt returns. However, he only had one for negative three. Uh, the other ones resulted, the, the other punts were just downed. So maybe they want to switch it up here, going with Saul him for the rest of the game. It's good to see Leonard back, and he's, look, he's looking to pass it. He throws it, he has a... Nearly picked by Jaron Alves. A little couldn't, bit above him. Couldn't get in position. I think if he kept running up field, he probably gets that. But try to go for the high jumping interception just over his head. Leonard not very successful passing the ball today, but he's done it all on the ground. And he's yet to turn it over on the ground in the air anyways. And no turnovers for either team other than that, that blocked PAT. And the turnover on downs as well. But no picks or fumbles. Those, those, those are morale killers. We have to turn our downs at least one for each team. It's thrown and it's caught and taken down. That's Gordon. He's had a couple of receptions so far. He's done a good job of getting open so far for Framingham. He's been the favorite target so far of Noah Leonard. Absolutely. You know, Gordon... They have some good threats there. Gordon sometimes lines up at quarterback and he's thrown some passes. But for the most part, he's a pretty solid receiver as well. Might be one of his biggest games of the season so far. Gordon at the bottom of your screen with the yellow gloves, yellow socks. He's on scrimmage. It's good by Ford. Ford gets down. I'm going to cross the 45, pause the 46 yard line. Yeah, Brandon Albert takes down Ford here. I mean, Ford's been their best offensive player so far and just powers it through again for a couple yards. You get four yards on that one. I think Ford could potentially be over, probably over 100, almost 100 yards at this point. Yeah, he's definitely getting close to it. He's a very solid runner, very powerful runner. He's looking for... 
look, looking for more. This is being passed, but Leonard nearly intercepted again by Jaron Alves. He's always in position to get an interception, just unable to. That would have been a beautiful play. Almost look, Krimat kind of reminds me of Darius Slay, if you've ever seen him play in the NFL. The real ball hawk there. Jared Allen was playing very well this season, very well last season, led, led the team interceptions. Boogie's currently leading in interceptions. He's been a solid player for the Bears all year, the past year as well, and that's that play no exception there, leading intercept or interceptions leader for the Bears this season. We're one of the team captains as well. A handoff here to Ford. Man makes, man makes a few men miss and breaks some tackles. He's still up. He's picked up there at the end of that play by a grown man. Capagna. Grown man, Brian Capagna, picking up another grown man. So I was about to say, before that rush, Ford was sitting at 21 carries for 80 yards. 3.8 yards per carry. He has a long of 14. Now he's 22 for 90. That was a gain of 10. So he's approaching the 100-yard mark, and that'll put him at 954 when he does that's for the nice, season. That's an excellent season there. I mean, it's better than my career high of zero. As it is caught, he's taken back and short of the first down. Manny Lara, the leading rece receiver for Framingham. This does a great job of avoiding tackles. Looks like someone grabbed his shirt. I think not sure who that was for the Bears. I think it was Cody, it was Cody Satomi who grabbed the bottom of his shirt. He was able to break away from that one. Laura, we saw him got shaken up a bit earlier in this game, but he's back and he's making plays. He's a leading receiver for this team. Same with Leonard, who got, she got, she got shaken up before the touchdown. And he's back in, making plays again. It's good to see. And they got, they got. A five four wide. It's falling over. They're calling that pass That's interference. I think they might have gotten tripped up, but they're gonna call it pass they're gonna call that pass interference. It looks like Gordon fell over on his own there. They the leading receiver so far today for Framingham. Well let's see. Uh, yeah, there there yeah. might have been some hands there. He, he falls over, he, he, he just sort of falls over. There was some fighting, but after the fight was over, he falls over, that's that's on him. But I mean, maybe he should try acting? Because that was pretty good. He, he sold that pretty well. It's Marcus Smart-esque. <laughs> Look like the Caprio out there with his acting abilities. I still think that Brandon Medeiros kind of got his hands on him, but he did, the tripping was all Gordon. Reach That's going to be another costly penalty, 15 yards. If that stands, the ref's having an intense discussion here. Been at it for a little bit. And here's the call. Got to center himself first, got to get position. Before the pass, holding, 29 on the defense. The ball crossed the neutral zone. Automatic first So they're down. going not PI, but before the snap holding on Brandon Medeiros. So interesting call. I can definitely I can definitely see that more than I would see pass interference. He was definitely the hands were fighting before he fell over, which is which would count as holding. But I mean definitely definitely a, a, a good break for the Rams as there's less than a minute remaining in the third quarter and you have the lead up three. Good break for Bridgewater, too. That's less yards than it would have been with a pass interference goal. Absolutely, and it's going to be Ford again, taking it for a few yards. We're going to have. Ford has just run over this defense all day. Once again, Steven Sylvia tripping him up. That's a gain of five on the carry. That puts him at 95. Five more yards, he'll be, reach the century mark. Surprisingly, the longest rush for either team so far has gone to Noah Leonard, the oh. quarterback for Framingham State. Even Cahoon's got involved in the running game, which is very surprising considering he's not much of a runner. Cahoon and Devon Ford, both with a uh, long of 14. Oh, Leonard with some trickeration and out of bounds, unable to go with it. Clock stops with six seconds remaining in the third. 
Leonard looked like he was thinking about running it, didn't really have an opening, and he'll just try to throw this one to the sideline for Gordon, where either Gordon gets it or nobody gets it. Andre Domond had no chance at that one. And Gordon had very little chance as well. This, this leaves him at third and five from the 20, 21. About the 20, the 19 yard line. A little over around 20, but here we are, Leonard. Look at the runner, and he pitches it back to Ford. Ford is met. That's a few more yards for Ford, getting ever so closer to that century mark. Yeah, it looks like he got three or four. I don't think that's going to be enough for a first down. That is going to be it for the third quarter. We're not leaving you. We're staying right here, so hopefully you are too as the players will switch positions on the field and go to the other side. Still awaiting the official call on whether that was a first down or not, but we will get that to They're you. calling it a fourth down. The chain gang looks like they're with a four, so. Here we are, entering the fourth quarter of this MASCAC tournament. The Rams lead 16 to 13 over the Bears. This is the lowest scoring game we've seen at home all year for the Bears. Only Absolutely. 29 combined going into the fourth. Even against Ithaca, the Bear, which uh, the home opener of the season, the Bears scored 14 points. They've only scored 13 today. Defense has definitely been on point though. This is the second lowest scoring game so far besides the game against Dartmouth last week where they only scored seven points total. So they've outdone themselves since last game, but they've, they're have they still behind in the scoreboard, which is what matters most. This is going to be an interesting position for Framingham. I think they're probably just going to end up going for it. And not this much, is going to be a big position for the Bears. Not much to lose. There's a big man has to run off the field there. He was my position. <laughs> That's why he's an athlete and I'm not. As we get set to this fourth quarter to be underway. Leonard, all alone in the backfield, going five wide. Gets his receiver. That's his running back, Ford. Ford, I believe that's going to be enough for a first down. As Ibrahimi, very upset about that. But Ford, he's a threat in the air, too. And he catches it and goes down. He was just out there in between Ibrahimi and Sylvia, and he was able to corral it and then get a few extra inches after the reception. Ford has played very well, and if we're counting receiving yards, he's definitely over 100, but if we're only counting rushing yards, still has yet to eclipse that. But he could do it on this play right here if he's, it's a handoff. He's two yards short, and yeah. now he has 100. Oh, not quite. He might have been short of the first down. Had me fooled. Campagna <laughs> and Sylvia did a good job of wrapping him up. They give him, if they give him a gain of one, he's one yard away. But I believe they might have been no gain. Looked for a second like he was going to have an opportunity here, but yeah, I think you're right. It looks like he was stopped almost immediately. So they mark it down. Oh, no, that is a gain of two. two. So well, he's now over 100. He's at, he's at 100 yards now. On 25 attempts, it's very, it's a, that's a lot of, it's uh, a lot of volume for him. Four average of four yards a carry. And he's back in the backfield, he's looking to get some more. He's trying to eclipse that 100 yards. Oh, and it's gonna be another run, another jet sweep. It's a reverse right here. And Albert reads it like a book. Stiff on, they lose yards on that play, I'm pretty sure. Not the first trick play we've seen out of Framingham. Definitely the first one like that. that was a little bit of a reverse here forward. I'm going to correct you that. I think this is the second time they've called this exact play. Oh, you might be right. <laughs> they did that, might have done it earlier. That's the first time we've seen Jaden Lewis get it. Wow, the fans are crazy shaking the cameras. <laughs> the defense, they turn the defense on and shake, making the cameras shake. That was awesome to see. Yeah, big stop by Albert right there. Third and eight. They need 
one, maybe two more of those, because this very well could false be third start. down territory. Well, this is going to be a, fa a false start. That's a timeout. That's out. a timeout for framing him. Looked look like I saw some jumping from the offense there, but I did not, and it's going to be a. It's going to be third down and eight as soon as the timeout is finished. You can see Coach Barry's squad, his defensive squad. This definitely is, I'm not going to say it's his favorite part, but it's definitely, he it definitely has a special soft spot for the defense. And they've, been, they've played well all season. And he's continuing, they're hoping to continue it again today. Got a big, big, big stop here. Yeah, maybe not turnover-wise, but this has been one of their best games all year as far as points given up. They can bend, but if they don't break, that's all they need. Again, they can allow a field goal, go down six. If they score a touchdown, an extra point. But touchdown, even scoring touchdowns is the same for the Bears, and they got the extra point blocked in return for two. So it's definitely still anyone's game. We see Leonard coming in, looking to throw it. Was thinking about taking it himself. Nearly Almost picked. intercepted. And there's a flag on the play. <laughs> was nearly picked by Zachary Souza. No relation to me, obviously. Nearly picked, though. An excellent play. Well, they was doomed from there from the start. Might, might be, be an illegal man downfield. Might be a penalty on. I mean, they, they probably expected him to run it there, as he likes to do. So they just started going off the field block and can't go too far down the field or it's a penalty. Ref getting into position. Big position guy. He likes his time in the spotlight and the camera. I like to soak it all in and spend as much time as possible. I mean, he's had a lot of work to do today. They've been. He's been very busy <laughs> dealing with the, all these penalties that are occurring. There's no flag on the play for illegal landman downfield. It was 97 who's eligible to go downfield. So there's a correction and no flag. All right, so they called, I think they said 97, but there's no 97 on the roster. There's a 97 over there though in a white jersey. So I'm not sure if someone switched their number. I know Jaden Lewis just switched this week from 18 to nine. So there might've been another one as well. 97 is not really a number you typically see on offense, but we are. Oh, you know, their punter's wearing 98, so. That's true, but that's on offense, that's special teams. Still strange. It looks like it is good. The kick is good. That is the first good field goal of the game today. So that puts Framingham up by six. A Bridgewater touchdown would take the lead. That's definitely what they need to get here. That was de they were definitely just in position to get that. I think a few uh, a few more yards back, that would not have been good. But Zachary Sousa is definitely hitting himself right now. We're not getting that interception that could have prevented that three-point swing there. That was in a tough spot. A lot of a lot of bodies over there near the sideline. Can't blame himself too much for that. He made he made a play. Made Absolutely. a big play. It's a massive play. It's a swat is as good as as an incomplete pass, anyways. As we have the Bears looking to answer with a touchdown of their own and take this they take this victory home with them, even though they're already home. So they can't really take it much. They can't really take it many places. All right, we got the backs to receive it. We got number four, Kion Gilzine Tucker, along with Marcus Carpenter, We're going to receive the kick from from Deboni, Enrique Deboni, out of Brazil. Yeah, Gilzine Tucker and Carpenter have handled all the kickoff action. Drew Donovan's been the punt return guy from Brazil, out of Shrewsbury. Not a great kickoff. That'll go to one of the up men. I think that's. They looked like Albert. I'm not too sure if that was him. I believe it was not a number 46. One number off. One number off. That's James Fontaine, senior linebacker out of East Grand Forks, Minnesota. I'm sure he wasn't expecting to get his hands on that one. 
but nevertheless, he does a good job of picking it up and taking it for some good yardage. I read, I read Forks and was expecting Washington, but I got Minnesota. Forks, Washington, of course. I don't need to get into that. As we have the Bears offense on the field. Couch with a big run. About three yards. Big, powerful run there. Yeah, that was a great run by Adam Couch. It looks like Chase Bono was trying to get the ball out of his hands, but Couch able to control it. I don't know how Bono saw anything. There was hair was in his face. Did I can pull, pull off look like that? Probably not. Snapped. Caught by Couch, and Couch is enough for the first down and more. He's still running. Great move and taken down at the 26-yard line. Huge reception for Adam Couch. Amazing play by Couch. He's running out of the backfield there. You see Michael Nocero is in no motion here. Cahoon off his back foot, dumps it off to Couch. And just some great blocking and a great job by Couch, able to take this one upfield. Give the Bears really good position. That's just towel running behind him, looking like a cape, maybe like Batman or something. There's a little flag running behind him. There's a catch. He has, he has no Sarah. No Sarah down the sideline, down it out at the three yard line. Just give out him the four. The end zone. Give him the four. An excellent play by No Sarah. He's had a big play before taking back, and this one's gonna stand. Great job by Cahoon. Looks right, looks back left. Great job dumping it right where it needs to be. Excellent right route to running. No Sarah. Excellent route running by No Sarah. No and one was going to be able to get that but him. Five wide, Adam Couch in motion. It's a, ooh. It's a, that's, that's a live ball, I believe. They're going to call it incomplete. A forward pass, all right. So it's not a live ball. Buono hit him hard. Kopecky unable to control the ball there. Would have been a, possibly a second touchdown. He had the room. Looks Look, like it was, a, it was just a shovel pass to Kopecky. Taking a page out of the Andy Reid playbook. Of course, Andy Reid, the fifth most winningest coach in the NFL. I learned that this morning. This couch gets the handoff. Couch almost wrapped up there. It looks like he'll get it down to the one. So a lot of people, I don't even know where he, there he is. He was inches away from getting, from punching it in there, but unable to. Oh, maybe it's time for another direct snap to Jalen Kopecky. That worked. I mean, it worked last time, but I believe they're going to do it again. They're going to do it. They're, they, they are doing that play again. <laughs> and it's going to work? It's good. I think it worked. I think he got it across it the worked plane. Again. It worked again. Although, hopefully what happens afterwards doesn't happen again. Oh, but Buono, that's not good. Buono looks injured there. He's grabbing his right leg, ripped his helmet off. Looks like the touchdown for Kopecky's going to stand. So Jalen Kopecky, a tight end, is going to come out, and he has two rushing touchdowns today. So just the direct snap to Kopecky again, powers his way through. Like we said earlier, bigger body guy, plays tight end. He's just able to force his way into the end zone. I don't know if Kopecky's ever scored a rushing touchdown. He has two on the day. Not a stat I figured I'd have to mention going into today. Did not expect the tight end to come away with two rushing touchdowns, or any at that. We, we love, they're saying that he is short of the first down, or the first short of the touchdown, at least it's, or graphic is showing. And Changing is also showing that he is short of the touchdown there, so that touchdown does not count, but I can only assume they're going back to that play. It's Coach Varia. He's proud of his team, and Buono is getting up. Thank God for that. You don't want to see an injury like that, especially the player as good as Chase Buono. It's good to see him get up. He's going to be helped off the field by a couple of his teammates, but nonetheless, keeping his right leg off the ground right now. He's had a good game. If he can't come back in, at least he'll we'll, at least he'll know that he did. He, he played his heart out. Yeah, Bono had two TFLs 
leading tackler for Framingham as well. And it looks like they're going to do it again. Jalen Kopecki at quarterback. Direct snap. This could this even be a pass. They're sending William Porter out wide. He's going to take it. He's in for the touchdown. Kopecki jumping up over his lineman for his second rushing touchdown of the game. There it is. I'm glad it happened. Because it looked, looked like it happened earlier, and we were, we were calling it like it happened. But Kopecki's going to be able to get it there. And we are never wrong in this podcast. Is that right? <laughs> Dylan Becky gets his second touchdown of the day. We should have had it early, and he gets it now. Excellent play. And that's a great play calling by BSU right there. They've ran that play a couple times and been able to get decent yardage out of it, or touchdowns out of it twice. Joey Nassau doesn't want to be kicked, doesn't want to be blocked again. And a flag. There's there's two flags. Nassau's going to pretend to kick it, not trying to lose his momentum. The guy get his mentals right as the, you'll hear the call. Tree's a little bit more on edge for this one hey, than good, any that, other one after missing or getting one blocked. See, if that, if that might that foul might have been on, that was on Framingham State. You're moving them close. So 12, 12 men on the field for Framingham. I don't know how much further they can back up. I, if you're very, I, I'd, I'd think about going for this. This is like, this is going for two here. No, this is, this is, this is I mean, you're, you're either tying it or get, take the one point lead, but. He'll like, just play it safe and Nassau automatic the whole season. That's go a couple Pe blocks. That's Kopecky getting some breathing in. <laughs> Camera's on him. He knows it. Waving to, waving to Smi the fans. Smile, you're on camera. Jalen Kopecki having a great day so far. And only looking to continue that. He had a big reception to go along with both of his rushing touchdowns as well. But Kopecki's been a force for BSU so far today. BSU retains the lead after the two scores by the... Ram, they had 10 points unanswered, just answered it with a little touch on their own. 10 yeah. and a half minutes remain in this fourth quarter, and it's still anybody's game. Just got to hope for a good kick by Shane Drake, hopefully down it with inside the 5 or the 10, and not let anything big up if you're Bridgewater. They got Darude Sandstorm playing on the PA system. Everyone's loving it, everyone's feeling it. As the the play the the waiting for the kickoff, possibly another onside kick. Who knows? Nah, they just gotta kick this one deep with the lead like this. This point in the game, you gotta learn your lesson, you know. Definitely was an interesting call when they did. It had, had me baffled. Absolutely, I just thought it was a bad kick. No, that was intentional, and it didn't work out. I know there was the weird, the weird penalty on that call, which I believe shouldn't have been called, but they called it. And we're in the, now we're in the position we are now. That was then. This is now. Bears defense back on the field. Steven Sylvia and his crew. As so is Noah Leonard and his crew. You know, the good news is the score looks somewhat normal now at 20 to 19. And it's dropped by Laura. I mean, 19 is kind of a strange score, but. Uh, you know, it's like a touchdown and four field goals. Not in this case, but. Could be. Manny we'll Lara, the season re receiving leader for Framingham, drops one right there. It's a little bit of a rare misstep from him. Of course, he's been out received by Nick Gordon, the man on the bottom of your screen now, moving to where Lara was. Gordon covered by Andre Domond. It won't matter as Ford takes the handoff and he's tackled behind for a loss there. And now he's under 100. <laughs> Couldn't eclipse it. You can't quite get it. The Bears are like, you want to get 100 yards? You got to earn it. 
Uh, they're just He's going to get to keep the 100. They're going to go with no gain on the play. We got lucky there. It looks like he's taken down behind it. But it's going to hurt the average a little bit. Very much so. We have again Gordon on Domond. And it, someone could have been in position there and accept that pass, but no one in the area. And it is overthrown by Leonard. Throwing out his throwing out his strong suit, but definitely a better rusher. But he can he can throw he can throw a pretty mean pass. Those are some powerful throws. As Donovan comes in. So they're gonna punt it here. I mean, uh, yeah, they're definitely gonna punt it here. I don't know why you'd fake it from fourth and ten, but we've seen we've seen stranger things happen. Yeah, they're a little bit too deep in their own territory for that, I think. If you're Bridgewater, you just want to kill as much clock as you can and hopefully run down and score. But first, of course, you have to secure this, and Donovan, Donovan does a great on job on the run that. down the sideline. So he lost his balance a little bit going down the sideline, but a fantastic return. That was excellent. Donovan having a great game so far today. A few key receptions and these returns have been special. He's a, he's a special player these teams have. These young players on this Bridgewater offense, and they're special. Yeah, you got Carpenter and Donovan for Bridgewater who are very similar players. A little bit smaller, but speedy, shifty. I've seen a lot of work on the return game and yeah, designed receiver runs. There's a McCarthy who's not on the field at the moment. But he's also very good. You have Daniel Akinche at the bottom of your screen here, who's also very special. His couch stopped after getting about one. The crowd is not too happy about that one. Couch being pushed down after the play was blown dead. Ref's just going to let him play. I believe he played through the whistle. I think I was, that's what you're supposed to do. Sure, there's a couple people in the bleachers that might disagree with that, but well, they're, they're not the ones who have to agree with me. <laughs> it's second and eight. It's handed off to Couch. It's not handed off to Couch. Cahoon's just gonna have to throw that one away. A lot of pressure, way too far, way too far back. Taking a sack at that position would be disastrous Could for Bridgewater. Use the cameraman with Cahoon holding on to it. Najir Montero with the hit and the pressure. You know, both quarterbacks today wearing number 12. I don't know if there's any other quarterbacks famously have worn number 12, but uh, definitely a popular number for quarterbacks. I wouldn't know why, though. As here we have Cahoon again looking to pass. Gets it to Nocera. Nocera staying up, making a cut, and he's still going out of bounds. No, Sarah with some fantastic running. Gets the first down and more. No, Sarah having a great game. Number 12, Cahoon. Gets his receiver. And no, Sarah was like, I don't want to go down. Makes a cut in, cuts out. And gets out of bounds after the first down. And he's, he's loving it. Uh, taking it back. Penalty. Number 25 on the so they're calling OPI on Jalen Kopecky, and he is very confused. He's upset about that call. He's had two touchdowns, but also two very costly penalties at least. Both on big hits by Michael Nocera. Uh, yeah, it's always... I'm not trying to say that Kopecky's trying to sabotage Nocera, but... <laughs> it seems like it's clockwork almost. I'm sure he, I'm sure he meant the best. Didn't catch exactly what he did here, but his offensive pass interference could be anything. And that's a big pass, just out of reach. And hey, there, is there a flag on that play? That could potentially I be. I think that's roughing. It could be anything. It, I believe it, it could be holding again on the defense. But we'll see what we'll see what the call is here. Now BSU's offense looks like they're taking a step back. 
They are backed up tremendously here. Dead ball. We have two for light conducts. One on the offense, one on the defense. 33. It's 73. Penalties canceled. It's fourth down. Matthew Godet is one of the calls. All the players call. I believe it was 23 as well for Framingham State, potentially. I don't think there is a 23. I may have read that wrong. I, I don't see a 23 on the Framingham it State could roster. Be, it could be number 33, which is Montero. Yeah, he's seen some decent action today. I wouldn't be surprised if it was him. Not to say that he's someone who gets a lot of penalties, but we've definitely called his name before. Pontier. I do not see number 23. Not the best part of the night. That one goes off the <laughs> helmet of a BSU player. That was James Fontaine, who James took, took a return earlier. And there he is getting hit in the head. He, he's gotten involved in some interesting ways on special teams so far as a, as a linebacker. Hey, say what you want about Fontaine, but he uses his head. <laughs> Get to them in many plays, but you can definitely say that about Fontaine. He uses his head. It's a very heads up play. I'm gonna, I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop with, the, with those punts. As we have. Probably for the best. <laughs> we have the offense back out there for the Rams. Number 12, Noah Leonard. The motion, Nick Gordon. Head it off to Ford. Ford now eclipsing the 100-yard mark. We've mentioned that a few times. But. That was Jaden Lewis in motion, and they're lucky that that was a handoff to Ford. So Nick or Jaden Lewis was wide open. I almost called him Gordon. That may have been my fault. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. That may have been me. Uh, Nick Gordon, Jaden Lewis, you know, their numbers are, you know, both single-digit numbers. But and, and they both play well, you know. I, think, I, I don't think any of them would either be, you know, upset if they're getting confused, the other one. Yeah, their numbers, I believe, are just flipped over. You know? Yeah, Nine, it's I think, pretty so. much. All right, and it's going to be a pass to Lara. Uh, I believe it's, they're going to call that incomplete. Uh oh, so it's a catch, but his knee was down. So he was. Yeah, see here. Yeah, it looks like he put that right knee down on the ground. Either way, I, he was just surrounded by Bridgewater players. Domond and Sylvia were right there. They'll go for a gain of one. It's going to be third and about seven. Third, oh, and three. third and three. Never mind. I can't read. We're good. I uh, just updated, so you're, you're good. <laughs> All right. So the Rams offense on this third and short coming up. Could be another run for Leonard. He's going to pass it. It gets his receiver. And that's Gordon. Oh, huge hit. Huge hit. Laying Zachary it. Souza. Souza made a big play in the end zone Leonard. last couple of drives and makes another play here. This is going low for that tackle. I do not want to be Nick Gordon right now. I'll be feeling that for the next few weeks. My, I might be feeling that for generations, to be honest. My, my grandchildren might feel that. It's a 17-yard reception for Gordon. He's back out there. Clearly, he he's not going to be feeling that for a while. If I was him, I'd be feeling it, but I'm not him. You and me both. <laughs> it's another catch. That's this one. Jaden Lewis. I went to Lewis, and he caught he caught it. Another high pass does a great job of going up and getting it. Quick pass from Leonard. That is a very quick pass. He he puts a lot of power behind these throws as Leonard does. Yeah, he gets him there quick. Absolutely. If it's it might, sometimes his passes aren't on target. When they are on target, they're beautifully thrown balls. In that first half, Leonard well, only completed five passes of 13 attempts, but he's definitely had a better second half. This is Ford taken down for a loss. The entire Bears defense was there to meet him. Yeah, it looks like Sylvia and Cataldo among them, two of the better players on defense so far for Bridgewater. The whole defense has been pretty good, minus those last two big hit passes. 
but Cataldo and Camp Campagno was there too. I don't know how many attempts Ford's had, but he's been he's been playing all day. Probably around 30, 30 carries at this point. At 28 so far, 28 for 103. I mentioned his, his catches as well. It's another one coming his way. That's a great pass and catch by the running back out to the 15-yard line. The Rams are, are just toying with the Bears now. Now it's time to play. And yeah, they just toss this one up. Looks like Jaron Alves came off his assignment to make the tackle. Just an excellent, excellent field position. With five, less than five minutes remain in this fourth quarter. And it's still anyone's game, but the Rams are knocking on the door. It's Ford. Could be in Bridgewater's best interest to just let something up here. It's never in your best interest to let them score. You have two timeouts. Can't let them kill too much time, though. They want their to take a shot there. And that stops the clock. Thrown. See, you never want to just let them score because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what can happen in the very next play. Where we see right here, balls overthrown for Gordon. Gordon's been one of his favorite targets so far. Leads the, the team in receiving five for 57. Very good stat line there. Yeah, him and Manny, Manny Lara both have five receptions. If I had a football team, for, or a fantasy football team for D3 players, I'd be happy for Nick, with my Nick Goy's performance so far. Oh, I fake the tackle is Leonard, Leonard getting taken out by Cataldo. He gets a few off that. Yeah, Leonard makes a guy miss right here, avoiding a tackle. It's big number 52 for Bridgewater. It's gonna be Anton Vasquez. The junior out of Nate. Nahant Mass. I've never heard of that. Nahant Mass. Played at Swampscott High School. I apologize for anyone watching from Nahant for butchering that pronunciation of your town. I'm sure it's lovely. Just never been. It's third and ten. It's going to be hands it off. Ford's got the first down and more. <laughs> Enough, I, I think that's enough for a first down. They could mark him just short. Sylvia did a good job of getting the tackle there. That was Ford stumbling a little bit to begin, but just bounces away from a couple tacklers. It was a, a delayed handoff off the draw there. Ford able to... They'll call that fourth and one, so just shy. Sorry, but you got to assume they're going to go for it. You have to go for it. We saw him similar situation. Noah, Noah Leonard, QB sneak, tried to go up over the line. Substitutions coming here for Bridgewater. That was, we're talking about fourth and one situations. And there's a timeout. When we talk about fourth and one situations, it reminds me of I believe it was Jason Kelsey, the center for the Philadelphia Eagles, talking about the play with the most guaranteed to get one yard is a QB sneak. So you should always run the QB sneak. He doesn't understand why, why teams don't run QB sneaks. That very next week, they run a QB sneak. They don't get a, they don't convert the fourth down. <laughs> so, you know, and then he's like, you can't always run QB sneak. I understand that, you know. So it, it's, there's, there's a bunch of plays you can call at this point. You know, they called a QB sneak last time. It didn't work. They could call a play here to Ford, who's had an awesome game. They, there, there could be there could be a bunch of ways they go with this. They could even pass it if they want to get aggressive. Looks like BSU is feeling a QB sneak coming on right here because they're going with some bigger bodies. And the crowd's feeling it too. I can, DBs. This press box is shaking with the amount of footsteps going on in the, in the stands right now. Oh, they're just they're going to kick it. They'll kick a field goal. Unless they're trying to Unless that's the goal, they're trying to fake, fake us out here. But the kick is oh, and it's deflected, blocked. and it's picked up by the up. Bears. The special teams for the Bears. That was a Coming huge, up huge play. Brandon Albert. Brandon is, Albert picks that up for the, the Zach Souza picks it up for the Bears. Brandon Albert got a hand on that. It's a fantastic play by BSU special teams. The Bears are still in this with the lead. A one-point lead for the Bears, and they maintain it. 
excellent play by the special teams. You got to be happy about that. George Varia, definitely happy about it. Now it's time just to feed couch. The game's not over. It's a little timeout for the Rams, but a couple of first downs, that could potentially be the game sealed for the Bears. And it's off the play by Brandon Albert, who's been doing it all day. Yeah, just got to try what works for you here. Maybe a couple runs, a couple of those short dump off passes. A couple just quick passes to Nocera like we've seen all day. That's gone in the Bears' favor. Couch with it. No timeout called but for the Rams. I think that's a good call by the Rams. Just let the clock go a little bit lower before you call a timeout. You don't want to use any of your timeouts too early. Let, let's see what happens with potentially the Bears. Wait, potentially waiting for a third down play to call this timeout. Typically, you know, calling it before two minutes, I can't but, say it's the best. They only have one left, so they got to use that sparingly. But there is no two-minute warning in college, so. Yeah, but even with no two-minute warning, I think calling it before two minutes, you're leaving too much time on the clock. That is true, but it might not matter. As Couch is a big run, sure the first down. And it is going. There's 20 minutes has rolled by, and they're only a few yards. Maybe only a few yards away from icing this game and getting a comeback win. I mean, this would be a huge win for Bridgewater. We've been talking about all day the Mascat Conference and how contested it is right now. It seems like Dartmouth is sort of run away with UMass Dartmouth is sort of run away from it, run away with it. But, but this game means a lot for these two teams. They switched the, the Framingham wins. They switch positions, but Bears are looking to maintain this here. Is the handoff to yeah, that's Couch and he's taken down short of the first down. And this is where you call a timeout for Framingham. And this is where they will, I think. Seems as such. And the punting unit is out for the Bears. That run goes almost nowhere. As yeah, that's the timeout by... Last timeout for Framingham. Final timeout call for Framingham, and they were going to have... They're going to get the ball with... Roughly about a minute, 10 seconds on the clock. Uh, Shane Drake gets decent hang time, so that'll definitely help the time situation. I think it, right now he's looking for distance. Just get him down because they can kick a field goal and win this. So if you can get them down the field, well out of your opponent, ter right out of your territory, and you can ice this out. But that was a crucial first down that the Bears needed. They couldn't get it. They could still fake it. You know, there's. Nothing to lose in the football game. <laughs> we have good protection for this punt. Josh Gore and his try little tripod protection there. Kick. Excellent booming kick over the head of the, of the return man. That's going to be. That's Lewis, and they can't bring him they down. They can't bring him down. Lewis can't. <laughs> on the sideline back into the territory. That was a great punt by Shane Drake, but awful coverage by the rest of the special teams unit. Defense did not, the special teams did not want to tackle. They've been playing great all the game. This, that, could have, that could have been disastrous for them. Yeah, that definitely could sway the entire game. I mean, he's looking about five guys missed an opportunity to tackle him right there, make that six. Well, regardless, of the, regardless of the outcome of this game, Barry is going to have to Teach these guys how to wrap up. There's a lot of, lot of training on tackling in this in practice this next coming week for the, for the matchup against Mass Maritime. So Leonard with it, looking to throw. He gets a receiver down short. It's a quick pass to the man who just took that return, Jaden Lewis. Oh, they're, going to, they're going with hurry up. Clocks just don't continue to, clock, to, to tick. The Rams cannot stop this clock. It's only a matter of time before they just have to kick it. And oh, that's going to stop the clock, looking for Nick Gordon. That could have been a big reception, but it stop, it, that does stop the clock. They can come up, they can call a play, make the change, make the adjustment they want to now. We have the completion here for Lewis. Guys, it goes down. 
I think in the huddle right now, they're probably calling a couple plays just in case the clock doesn't stop so you'll know what you're running. They'll be calling two or three plays right here. The fans are in it. You can see them with the camera shaking to the fans rooting on this defense and cheering for this defense. They are in it. They are feeling it. Oh, nearly offside. No one caught that. Leonard under pressure. Rolls out. He'll hit. That's Coombs. Coombs again. That's, he's, had a few, he's had a few targets today. I think that makes it three. Playing to hurry up to play. Leonard trying to get his receivers in motion, but the clock is ticking. There's 20 seconds remaining. The fans are crazy. I can really hear myself speaking as Leonard throws it out of Incomplete. bounds. Incomplete. Incomplete, I should say. Towards the sideline. you got to go for it here. It's fourth and six. It's too far for a field goal. That was Jaden Lewis on the target. This is the biggest play of the game up to this point. Could only get one hand on that. That was going to be a tough catch for him. And the BSU sideline, the stands. We're trying to get this crowd by all the You can see on the camera how loud it is in here. The camera's shaking. This is the craziest I've ever seen it at Bridgewater. I, I can feel the vibration under me. It's hard It's hard to focus on the game when I'm being shaken up right now. Substitution's coming on, setting the, up the formation for Framingham. We're going to blunder right now as Leonard takes the snap. There's a flag. That, that could be on Looks Framingham State. Looks like BSU thinks it's against Framingham. Could be on Framingham State. If that's on Framingham State, that could be, that could be huge. Look at it. We have to add time to the clock. That crowd definitely, I feel like, played a factor there. Everyone, it was very loud. It is. Especially in a position like this for Framingham. That cannot be ideal. I am in the, we, we are in the comfort of the press box. We're wearing, he, wearing a headset. We still hear how loud it is here. It's not just hearing it. We could feel it, too. Here's the call. Our fabulous referee. Dead ball, false start, offense. False start on the offense. So that's going to be a huge penalty for Framingham. Pushing them back even further. Clock was set back to 11 seconds. It is a five yard penalty. It's going to be fourth and 11 as this crowd is insane right now. It's good to see Tevin Cadet out there again for Framingham. He went down a little bit ago. Big right tackle. These conference matchups are. Very crucial. They're going to try to kick the field goal. A, a field goal from the 40, their, their own 45 yard line. And BSU is going to go ahead and try to ice them. We call timeout. This is this is a crazy play call. This is what this should be. What like a, like a that's a like a 55 yard field goal. I mean, you know, Henrique Deboni, he's 6'5", 230. He's definitely got the power. Or I'd assume so. We haven't seen him kick kick anything this deep. He was warming up from 55 out prior to the game, so I mean, there might be a chance here. They, they're, I mean, they were predicting that this would happen. Essentially, they do. They, these fans do not want this kick to go up. This, this, this is it. This is the game right here. This field goal is good. Premier State takes it. If it's no good, Bridgewater takes this game. Enrique Deboni, a long way from home, from Rio Claro, Brazil. He went to, went to high school at Shrewsbury. He's looking to make a statement for himself here. This could be the play of the season that I've seen so far. It's just give you an idea how far away this is. Kick is up. It has the distance. It's, it's no good. It is no good. Four seconds on the clock. He got the distance, that did was, not have the angle. That was so close, look at that. That looked very close. I, I wasn't that quite is, sure until I saw the celebrations coming from the BSU that, sideline. That could, that, that was, that would have hit the, the crossbar. If that was accurate, that would have hit the crossbar. That is insane what we, what we just witnessed. Yeah, he definitely had the power for that, but that, that's a tough kick regardless of who you are, that is. Very impressive. It's James, where you see pro kickers take it from that deep. James Cahoon led this team to a game-winning drive and take the lead up to one point. 
and the defense just did the rest that they the, does the rest there. An yeah. absolute insane game for the Bears. They're just going to come out victory formation here. Cahoon's going to knee it. His players are very excited. Tried to throw his towel over the no Sarah. The wind got a hold of that one. So Chon Lee seen there for the Bears. We're very excited. But victory formation for the Bears. They played great. The defense did their job. So we see a kneel down for Cahoon, and that is the, your final. Your Bridgewater State University Bears, 20. The Framingham State University Rams, 19. This game went down to the wire. So that that call, that false start, came up huge for Bridgewater because DeBoney definitely could have hit that. Absolutely. He had the, the distance. He had the strength. They just did not have the accuracy. Yeah, he, had, he had the distance for 55, so that... You know, without that penalty, he probably would have got that. That is, that is a crazy game. One of the craziest games I've seen so far this season for the Bears. And like that, and with that, this is the, your final 2019 Bears win. Thank you for all so much for joining us. My name is David Souza. And I'm Luke Mansfield. Thank Bears. you for tuning in. And remember, every day is a great day to be a Bear.